Mythos Busters, investigating the mystery, monsters, and madness of Arkham Horror, the card game. Hello and welcome to episode 20 of Mythos Busters, clogging up your ear holes since 2016. I'm Sean, and we sadly don't have the full compliment tonight. We've got merely a quorum. We're missing Nick, but with me, of course, is Ian. Hi, I'm here. Yeah, and Scott. We're also missing Tom. I know, I know, but I feel like people have kind of like grown numb <laughs> yeah. to to the pain of Tom's Tom's absence. So I don't want to I don't want to keep like digging at the exposed nerve and keep bringing that up. So that that's fair. It'll just be a pleasant surprise when Tom shows up, mm-hmm. as he is wont to do at the most opportune and random hours. A Tom is never early nor late. He arrives precisely <laughs> when he means to. Tom is the closest thing I will ever meet to an actual Astari. <laughs> all right well tonight we've got a fun episode so we've got our our standard taggers at the beginning or whatever segments i suppose a normal person would call them uh and then our discussion topic for tonight is kind of a, a player card state of the game more or less we're going to talk about the dunwich legacy and our favorite and least favorite cards from the cycle it's gonna be fun it's gonna be awesome so let's start in uh, one thing. We actually got a, a, a Mythos Busters voicemail from someone recommending that we, we take a little time at the top of each show to, to take a little bit more time in, uh, I guess, recapping some, some play experiences that we've had maybe since the last time. So I'll start. I had uh, basically the only thing I've played of Arkham since we recorded last time is my horse memory campaign. So we built a deck last time. I built a complimenting Roland deck, and I've been taking it through the Dunwich Legacy. And I've been doing it by the actual rules, guys. It's a thing. <gasps> You're I not know. cheating? I'm not cheating, because the, the cycle's complete. We have all the cards we're supposed to have, so I don't need to do the thing where I'm like, oh, I already have this deck I built. Yeah. Oh, but we've got all these new cards I want to try. Every I'm investigator sure has adaptable <laughs> I'm sure as shit not going to spend XP to, to take these cards that I would have taken at the beginning had they been available to me because the uh, the campaign rules kind of fight the release uh, format. Mm-hmm. But anyway, uh, so so I've actually been taking this one because uh, I started it right as Lost in Time and Space uh, came out, which I actually have not had a chance to play yet. <gasps> Sitting on my table, ready to go. But last night I was playing Where Doom Awaits with this campaign. And it was awesome and tense Uh, so i feel like i have to say some nice things about this scenario now to to balance out episode 18 um so it was really tense i i drew a ton of enemies at the front but luckily it turns out agnes and roland are are pretty okay with seeing enemies uh but that obviously stopped up my investigating power so i'm kind of i'm kind of cruising through doing all right uh i think i've got like three xp we saw a wizard we got to delve too deep off early it things are going fairly well Till we start getting down to the end. Like, I start getting locked up with enemies, and I get that treachery that shuffles up the the non-central locations and, mm. and, like, moves investigators back. So I'm losing actions to that while I'm trying to investigate. Um, there's four Doom left on the agenda. And in that mythos phase, each investigator pulls an Ancient Evils. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. I can't. I have to get to the last scenario. So I'm, I'm agonizing sitting there the, the last, you know, essentially the last two turns trying to figure out what I can do. So, so Agnes finally reaches the peak, the last location. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's got like one action left. She takes a swing at the boss. Uh, that upkeep phase, Roland, who is just like set to go for investigating. Like Agnes is taking the heat off. Uh, she's tanking the enemies up there. He's ready to pop in and just like clover the hell out of that location. So what do I pull? Any any guesses, guys? What do I pull? Uh, I pull cover up. Oh. So I pull cover up. Agnes, who's already engaged with the boss enemy, who's not nothing to fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, she pulls the servant of the lurker. 
who you know normally like uh the house always wins has conditioned me to to enjoy seeing him coming up because it's like oh hey he's the one kind of tough enemy in this thing yeah xp waiting to happen great i'm happy to see him but that was not the case this time I'm like, oh god why now so agnes the next turn slams down a red gloved man who by the way has quickly become one of my favorite cards he's so so good Windmill slam? Like, full-on <laughs> card behind the back, over the head slam? Like, friendly suplex slam. Okay. <laughs> friendly suplex. <laughs> Just bam! Uh, so, in that turn, she was able to... <laughs> she had Fire Axe out with uh, Dark Horse, and playing down the Red Gloved Man were my last two resources, so she's swinging in with Fire Axe for seven. Three sevens with two damage. So, she finishes off the boss... And gets one hit in on the Lurker. So, looking pretty okay. So then Roland comes in. Finishes off the Servant of the Lurker. Mm -hmm. Which clears one of his his, uh, uh, clues from from cover-up. Yeah. And my last action, because it was the last action I had that turn. I I just went balls to the wall. I dropped two level 2 deductions. And an inquiring mind on a single investigate test. Wow. So, what do you think happened, guys? What, uh, what, what, what do you think is the likely outcome there? Did you, did you get to lost in time and space? Did you, <laughs> I'm guessing did you get to tentacle, waltz? but based on how those things go. Oh no. No, no, he succeeded the test and pulled oh. six clues. He cleared his cover-up and cleared the location of clues with one action. It was wonderful. Oh. Wow. That's but impressive. in that moment, I'm like, if I'm ever going to pull the tentacle, it is right the hell now. Mm. <laughs> but anyway, it, uh, it ended up being fun and tense and, and, and pretty awesome. So I'm really excited to take <laughs> Lost in Time and Space with that campaign because now... Matt Newman can throw me all the curveballs and and weird changing of the goalposts all he wants. It's the last scenario, guys. If they die, they die. <laughs> I feel like Roland had one of those moments, like if you guys have seen the the newer Sherlock Holmes movies with Robert Downey Jr., where like time stops and he analyzes exactly how to dismantle everything. Like that sounds like the exact moment Roland had. Yep, that's that's pretty much it. Oh God, it was so glorious. Roland has has grown on me, but that's we'll get to this later. But I'm pretty sure that's just because the Dunwich Legacy is actually the Seeker cycle. You know, I I have to say Roland is way better now with the card pool than he was mm-hmm. at the core. He was good in the core, but six like substantially he's, better now. Yeah, he's got way more options for for coming up for that that weakness between his willpower and his sanity. That was always such an Achilles heel because everything's so freaking horror heavy in the encounter deck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the whole cycle is. I, I think what he's what's happened is he's become more consistent. Like that low sanity made him like he had the tools, but he would just get knocked out by like random treacheries, and now he has a bit more. Uh, a bit bit more effects to uh cover up his weaknesses mm-hmm. yep all right well that's that's my play story of the week you guys got any uh any play experiences you'd like to share with the class <laughs> uh, show and tell <laughs> i have one um but it's lost in time and space and it has to deal with the ending so i'm gonna save it for the next mm. show because mm. it does have total oh. spoilers in it but good uh, teaser yeah yeah, I'm going to save all my Lost in Time in Space stories, because <clears throat> they're probably a bit spoilery. Um, but uh, I have been happy with my Agnes solo campaign. Most, I mean, Not Agnes, sorry. <laughs> but Wendy. Um, and especially because Wendy's like... Um, is that a for... Freudian slip there, Ian? Is that, what you, is that who you wish you were playing? <laughs> Uh, no, I- I'm quite happy with my Wendy. <laughs> um, it's all right. We have first the first issue to tackle is the denial. We can do this together. <laughs> uh, one of the reasons is because Wendy is like a fave of mine, um, and she has as many detractors as people who support her. So I always like reporting on her successes, and she's been <laughs> one of my su- most successful. Um, actually, my most successful solo investigator, actually. Um, 
And anyway, so the Where Doom Awaits play, uh, same scenario as yours, Sean, was very tense. I was very nervous about it because I have a lot invested in Wendy, and I'm like, uh, how's she going to deal with this scenario? Because, like, I I knew this, the spheres were coming down um, because of how she had resolved blood on the altar. So I was like, okay, that's going to be trouble. Like, she doesn't have a ton of ways of dealing with that. And I know, especially early, especially early. And I know the scenario can be rough in terms of like enemies you draw. And so I'm like, eh, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Um, but anyway, this is a dark horse windy deck and I, I was doing pretty well on kind of the investigation front, but I was just basically dodging the spheres as, as much as any time I could. I didn't have a way of killing it. So I was just doing that over and over hoping it would come back to bite me. Um, Taking some That's da- never happened. Yeah, taking some damage and horror from it here and there. Uh, I get to the second level of the hill. Um, by this point, I've now drawn um, three big enemies on the board. <laughs> so there's two spheres and... No, there's a sphere and there's two of one each of the thralls that, th- that are there. So I'm like, okay, this is very, very bad. And Wendy had gotten to the point where she was like one damage away from taking a nap a long nap <laughs> um <laughs> and so i had dodged away to one of the locations away from kind of this the i forgot what that center it's like the mid-level sentinel hill location um and they were just about to come towards me and hit me and i was like okay this is it until i took a long look at the location connections and this is the moral of the story kids is always <laughs> check and double check the location connections and I noticed for the very first time, because this is the first time it's mattered, that there's actually a connection between, I think it's like... Some of the offshoots. It's like tear in the path on the second level and the broken path mm-hmm. on the first level. So I was able yep. to actually dodge back down the hill, uh, leading the enemies on like a big Benny Hill routine, just running them around, <laughs> skipped way back... No, up. no. Benny Hill is for your other campaign. <laughs> yeah, because this was actually successful. Led him on a merry goose chase, got to the top of the hill, and then um, with kind of a crazy combination of cards, but basically the key was will to survive, was able to mm. intentionally fail my last test so that I could do look what I found and grab the two clues and boop, I'm out of there. Okay, okay. Question one. Awesome story, <laughs> by the way. Question one. How do you afford will to survive in a dark horse build? Um, very carefully. No, you usually, <laughs> usually the problem is um, a lot of the times that I would want to use it, I'm not able to. So there have been times where I've questioned the decision, but it's mm. come in handy in each scenario, usually towards the end because I know it's there and I'm going to need it. Usually by that point, I'm not really playing a lot, so I will have uh, kind of forego the the dark horse for the turn or two beforehand and just like save up or drop an emergency cash and just quickly get the four i need in preparation and then just play the it's basically just like a last turn card a lot of times in these scenarios yeah i'm finding i'm finding i maybe i am not a good enough player to like hit the skill ceiling on dark horse i think it might be a little beyond me i'm okay with it Mm-hmm. But I feel like someone better, someone a little bit more analytical and tactical than me is probably going to get more out of it. It's like I've played a few decks with it, and it's it's a very high skill cap deck. Like it's every decision is super important, and like like you said in one of our chats there, I've never <laughs> thought so hard and long in the refresh phase about like. Yes. Oh, do I take this resource or not? <laughs> like you gotta, you gotta plan and anticipate for the entire next turn because it it kind of matters. And like, first of all, I love Agnes because she kind of makes you think because she's got all those cool little timing tricks to trigger her ability. So the whole time you're playing her, you're like, all right, I can I can painkillers here and oh, all forbidden knowledge here and blah blah mm-hmm. blah blah blah. And you're really kind of actively engaged with it, which is one of the reasons I like her so much. But then with Dark Horse, you're also like, okay. The next turn, this might come out. I've got this thing engaged with me. I'd really like to go get this clue, but I want to be able to play this card from my hand, so I don't know if I take the resource or not. Yeah, and I think it's funny that sometimes, you know, I'm in the refresh phase, and uh, you you draw your card, and I'm like, I've already thought it through. I'm like, okay, I, 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 I'm not taking a resources turn. I draw my <laughs> card, 
and it's emergency cash. And I'm like, oh boy, this changes whether I take a resource <laughs> or not. Like it just, yep. oh, the yep. brain burn. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. One of the feel bads is in that windy dark horse deck. It, I've ha- happened to get paranoia along the way. And so I have done the like turn to save up for will to survive and then paranoia hits. And it's just like, I should have just, Ugh. I should have just forgot the resources and stayed at dark horse then, <laughs> instead of wasting time. But that was actually oh, one well. thing I was kind of glad to see was I pulled paranoia with, uh, with uh, horse memories as my random basic, so I was like, "All right, well, you know what? As far as as far as like countering uh, basic treacheries or basic weaknesses go, this one's probably not too bad." Yeah. All right. Well, good catch up. Hopefully, that was interesting. I hope. I think it was. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Okay, so moving on from there, uh, I'm gonna try to hobble my way through the community highlights here in Nick's absence. So. First thing, uh, we got a call-in request that actually someone someone recommended something that actually had been a percolating thought already. So someone recommended that when or requested whatever whatever the word you want to put in uh, requested that when we talk about our play experience, we we maybe take the time to frame it in a slightly more narrative context. So like actually, you know possibly getting to the point of writing out a short story and and kind of talking about it that way which actually is an idea i've had and executed in in cardboard of the rings and that idea was for this podcast before we started it um the only issue there is the time really because doing something like that writing in general i'm not much of a writer Ian, it takes time to write right it does yeah (laughs) and you're, you're just like immediately happy with whatever you write right (laughs) <laughs> uh, you don't need don't, any reworks or any time to think about it i don't think that has ever happened where i've been happy with what i wrote right away <laughs> <laughs> well when you're more of a narcissist it helps <laughs> but anyway so it's a really cool idea and it's something we'd definitely be interested in doing so if anyone has a mind out there to to take a play session maybe just a couple turns maybe an entire scenario and and you know write out or even record themselves doing a, a kind of a narrative prosy short story type uh playthrough we'd be happy in, in most cases to air it presuming <laughs> presuming it's not like an hour long so uh <laughs> yeah this is this is definitely something that we'd be looking for in the future but if anyone's got any hot leads ideas if they want to do any of the work to help us out we'll definitely pick up the slack actually mm-hmm. Andre, who does who does the little Mythos Busters tag at the beginning, that's how I met him. Is I, I contacted him to, to do the uh, read through for the Lord of the Rings uh, short story that I wrote. And God, he's got he's got sexy pipes, man. Oh, he does. <laughs> My goodness. I enjoyed when you did that for Cardboard of the Rings. I I, I remember listening to that episode and be like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So well, yeah. Well, now you know that idea was originally for Mythos Busters. Ooh. I just had the chance to hop on it first for Cardboard of the Rings, <laughs> furthering the rift. All right. So, moving on from there, Nick also pointed out that uh, there was uh, another house rule he wanted to highlight here, and it's called Strategic Hard Mode. Strategery. So this, this, strategery. <laughs> so this comes from. Uh, jm my two on bgg uh, so basically he posted about this and he wanted to to come up with a hard mode variant that provided a harder experience without necessarily playing around with the random uh, the variability of the chaos bag as much mm-hmm. so so he he wanted something harder that wasn't quite as unpredictable because the hard mode we have now kind of you know in addition to um to changing the the numerators on the token uh, on the, sorry, on the special icon tokens themselves, it also, the mix of the bag is way swingier. So basically what he did is, is by default, you follow all the normal game rules, but to increase the difficulty level, you basically, you choose one, two, or three, depending on how hard you want to be. The increase, the higher the number, the harder this, this makes it. And during ca- gameplay, whenever you take a scaler within the game, Basically, that per investigator count, whether it's, you know, the ghoul priest health or the clues on a location or the requirement to advance, you add that number to it. So instead of, you know, uh, 
two per investigator, it becomes two per investigator plus three, or, or maybe he adds it to the modifier. I can't remember exactly how this works. I, I think the way is like, so if we were playing a game and it was two mm-hmm. clues per investigator, there'd be six mm-hmm. clues, and then his modifier adds one, two, or three to that total. Okay, yeah, yeah. so it's not to the multiplayer. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It, so... it, follows, it follows bed mass. Like, you multiply it by the number of investigators, and then you add the thing. So, there you go. Yeah. There you go. So so basically the idea here is that it does make the game harder because you have to stretch a little bit farther to hit all the goals. Um and and but it doesn't it doesn't create maybe the I don't know, some people I don't know, one of the really interesting things in paying attention to, to board posts and stuff in this community is there are some people who just who are uncomfortable with the variability of the chaos bag. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and this is you know this is not a bad way to, to kind of get around it. So the the advantages he points out is that it is slightly more consistent. It's strategically harder because you have to last longer or, or do more in less time. Um, disadvantages he points out is there are certain scenarios that don't have uh, especially like clue scalers mm. that kind of are a hitch in in this modification. So I'm trying to think like uh, the beginning of Miskatonic Museum, for instance. Because you right. only get, I'm pretty sure you only get like one, do you just get two clues on the first location? It's something like that. It's like if you if you scale the requirements, but the locations don't have the per investigator, then yeah. that would screw you, I guess. Unless I actually realize now that, that my example did not work, but yeah, so you guys see how that could work yeah. if you've got kind of lopsided numbers and that just doesn't work out that way. But um, yeah, so I thought that was interesting. I think it's uh, it seems like a really good uh, kind of stopgap because like, so if you play on easy and you move to normal, um, I find that the the difficulty gap there is smaller than the move from standard to hard. Like that's uh, that seems to be a big jump because those tokens you flip that car they just get horribly yeah. worse, right? And the move from hard to expert mm-hmm. is not as big as the standard to hard. So this could be kind of an intermediary level if you're looking for something like that yep yep or if you're just slightly more if you if you like your games feeling a little bit more euro and a little less yeah. amerithrash mm-hmm. <laughs> embrace so that was interesting. the back <laughs> <laughs> so uh moving on from there uh we did have a guest article this time around so this is from my local meta game i suppose if we want to adopt the competitive card game turn uh from from chris who writes an article about hosting an arkham event so i know this is something that maybe some some people have not even had any experience with uh i think it's far i think there's just less precedent out there to to forming a play group for a co-op game than there is for a competitive game like magic has has run the tracks through the gaming community for years on how that kind of format works but competitive it just you just kind of get people together right it's it's it seems like it should be easier but it turns out in reality it's actually not so uh chris actually hosted i think it ended up being like close to 30 people for the first meetup at uh at our local game store here at ffg sadly was not able to make it myself i was uh what was i doing that weekend i don't know something awesome i'm sure i'm just kidding it probably wasn't awesome i wish i was there but anyway, he hosted and and he wrote down a bunch of his thoughts on what went well, what what other people who are looking to to kind of do this same thing and try to get a local play group together might be able to do uh, to to make that happen. So if you've got a minute, definitely go out and read that. I think he's got some some nice tips for starting your own local play group. Either of you guys have a local play group for Arkham? My house. <laughs> My <wife. laughs> yeah, I, I wish. <laughs> Despite the fact that there are a few people on our very Discord channel who I know live in the Bay Area along with me, it's just, you know, hard to get stuff together, and now I'm moving, so I'll have to see if there's any actually actual Arkham players in my new location. Yeah, adulting is hard. Yeah. One of my local game stores, has, like, Monday night is LCG night, uh, and so it's usually we're on our Facebook group and be like, hey, who's coming out Monday? What games are you bringing? Um, and so sometimes I go there to play Arkham. Uh, but it, it's for me, it's not consistent enough because I want to start a campaign, but some people don't show up every week or whatever. Like I can't show up every week because of my shift schedules and stuff. 
Um, Sounds a lot like trying to schedule an RPG. Fusion complete. Yeah. But I mean, I've we play the standalones, which are fantastic. I can't wait for the the Gen Con one. Um, yep. Yeah. Curse the Rougarou, man. Oh, still love that thing. So good. Yep. Yeah, I'm still. I don't know. I love Rougarou, but I still. I think Carnival is is my favorite one. When I'm just gonna play a single shot scenario, that one. That one's just so fun. Carnival's got some really neat mechanics, like the whole ring and the hidden mm-hmm. people and stuff like that. But I don't know. Rougarou is just just to me just just sings like just different endings and like oh it, yeah I don't know. It gets in your blood. Yep, gets in my <laughs> blood. There it is. <laughs> All right, so last thing I'll touch up on, uh, or touch on, rather. I'm not going to touch up because I haven't screwed it up yet. But it's the the Mythos Busters listener event. Of course, I mentioned this last time. Uh, we actually have confirmed and purchased our swag. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So excited. It's got Ian all over it, but that's okay because it's awesome. I don't know if that's going to entice listeners or make them slightly scared. <laughs> Every piece of our swag has been lovingly caressed over every inch of Ian's body. <laughs> Why is this so moist? <laughs> it's just gonna so have it's a like Rima. It's gonna be a picture like the old American Beauty. It's a for it's a me in the tub with a bunch of swag. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! We need to make that happen. Um, but the logistics are boggling, so it's probably not gonna happen. Anyway, super excited about that. Like I said last time, if you didn't get a ticket, no worries. Show up anyway. Come say hi. If we have extra swag, we will do our best to uh, to throw a couple pieces out here and there. I can't make any guarantees, but we'll, we'll certainly do what's within our power. And we want to see people, so definitely come on out. That's Saturday at Gen Con starting at 6 p.m. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's all we got for the community. Ian, we had some succulent, juicy news this uh, last cycle. Oh, you walk us through it? Oh, did we? <laughs> we had a ton of news in the interim. Um, and the first one was just kind of the announcement of the release of Lost in Time and Space. So nothing to see there, really. It's out. The cycle has reached its conclusion. Buy it. Play it. It's good. <laughs> um, and pretty soon we'll be having our kind of uh, review of the last two scenarios and talking about those scenarios. So you can look forward to that. So let's get to the Carcosa stuff, which I know is what we want to talk about. <laughs> the first article was called A Mind is a Terrible Thing to Lose. This one is previewing the Path to Carcosa box, which is coming soon, probably at Gen Con is what everyone is assuming. Um, and this particular article focuses on kind of some of the unique mechanics to the upcoming cycle that they've mentioned before, but this goes into more detail. So specifically, they're talking about how um, this cycle, of course, is based on the work of Robert Chambers and the King in Yellow and how the madness and the fear in that story is more subtle and more kind of internal versus uh, the kind of like cultists of the Dunwich cycle and, and the crazy monsters that are just out there for you to see and drive you crazy that way. This is going to be more kind of psychological and so to do that they're focusing on the hidden keyword which we've talked about before but they spoiled a new one which is called whispers in your head doubt and this one uh like the other hidden cards when you draw it you put it into your hand secretly so you can't tell the other players you cannot play events as long as it's in your hand and then you have to spend two actions to discard it and get rid of it hey uh weren't you gonna backstab that guy (laughs) <laughs> no, no, that wasn't me. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I know you have a dodge in your hand. Yeah. I just, uh, well, <laughs> I nope. doubt that was me. <laughs> <laughs> you must That's be the mistaken. perfect time to delve too deep. Oh, <laughs> so I'm just really curious how this is going to play in practice with like how out there these kind of effects are going to get and how it it truly is going to have an impact on uh, kind of multiplayer and how ch- players react to each other or not. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I think we touched on this the first time we talked about the hidden mechanic, but like to me, this looks like it's laying the ground for like social deception to enter this game. And like the idea 
of uh, a special event, like a single one shot scenario where like the traitor mechanic is the mechanic. That to oh, me is just yeah. so juicy. Oh, it's so juicy. <laughs> well, they definitely have the mechanics for it now with this hidden thing. Right. I'm so excited to see this play out. Yes, someone in the chat earlier this week, I think when this when this article came out, was mentioning, would it be awesome if in the last scenario there's a uh, a hidden like a hidden treachery card that basically there's one copy of it and there's a whole bunch of other ones so you don't know who has which and if you cause the other investigators to die your investigator wins the campaign <laughs> <laughs> oh man so much fun. <laughs> but i don't know how like you do that you have to like build a grief deck which i'm totally up for <laughs> uh but something like that like oh what a mind screw He's so yeah. sweet yeah, there's definitely a lot of possibilities. It's it's interesting that I feel like we'll talk a little bit more in the when we talk about the investigators in the next article, but I feel like this cycle, upcoming cycle is putting kind of a big focus on multiplayer stuff. Cuz like <clears throat> I mean, the nice thing is this does something in solo, like it's not just completely blank. Like you still can't play events and you still have to spend actions to get rid of it. Um, but you know, the it's but not going to reach whole... its full potential unless you're playing with other people. Right. There's a whole layer of not only what this card is, but what the other players at the table think it might be. It's based on based on what you know the hidden or what you think the hidden cards in the scenario might be. Like they see you put that card in your hand, they're like, oh. That's what I'm wondering. What else there could be? Because like, are they just spoiling the tame ones now? And there's something more that you're gonna be speculating about if you're the the other players draw it i don't know i I guarantee there is like there's gonna be some dick punch level cards (laughs) (laughs) or boob punch we are we are equal opportunity yes punchers uh crotch crotch punch in general just yeah sure let's go with that no one likes being punched in the crotch yeah i think that's your thing but you know i think this article also shows uh because we had that one card spoiled was it the skill card for the the first pack, yeah, with the 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 four running foot, yeah. oh, four jelly one. Uh, what's, I wanted to call it. I'm I'm out of here, but that's super not. It's like card. I, um, running afraid or terrified or something like that. Yeah, but like fight, fight or flight. If you have at least, if you only have three horror left or whatever, and then in this one we see a treachery uh, surge revelation. If you have at least three horror on you, lose an action. So a lot of playing on that horror mechanic too. Play and counterplay. I'm still. I'm still I'm I'm coming through some rough times with Lord of the Rings right now where the <laughs> there's been a couple quests of late where like the new player cards that you want to play around with are directly countered by the quest it comes in so it becomes frustrating but to a certain point it's very awesome. Um so they also go into the doubt and conviction mechanic which they mentioned before just very briefly. They still don't give us much more. But they just mentioned that it's uh, part of kind of the different story resolutions and the interludes that are going to have you mark one doubt or mark one conviction. So it sounds like they those can, those levels are going to go up. Maybe, oh, I have two doubt and three conviction or whatever. Um, but the interesting part is that you don't know which is going to be good or bad. <laughs> which I, I'm also curious to see how that's going to work like you're you're going to be racking things th- these things up but you're not going to have an idea of which one is going to hurt you or not so mm-hmm. i'll be interested <laughs> to see how the story kind of gives you some clues about what you're doing exactly i'd love it if the big twist is that the conviction is what's going to screw you because like the craziest person in the world thinks they're completely sane right mm-hmm. uh and a basic weakness also in this article yep this drawing is, the uh, sign yeah, you want to read that one, Scott? So uh, sure, there. yeah. Revelation, put drawing sign into your threat area. Your maximum hand size is reduced by five while checking your hand size during the upkeep phase and then two actions to discard it. <laughs> so your hand size is three. <laughs> yeah, I always have to read this a couple of times because at first I thought it was reduced like two, five, and I was like, yeah, that's not too bad. But <laughs> yeah, three is rough. I mean, at least it allows you... Oh no, because you draw your card and then you check your... Oh, that is really bad. <laughs> I just realized how that works in the refresh phase. <laughs> like, you, you draw it, it's just like, okay, well, dump your hand. Pick your favorite three. 
Yeah. <gasps> it's like choosing your favorite <sighs> children. So this does definitively answer the question that there will be some new basic weaknesses in this expansion, which I think we all kind of figured. So mm -hmm. there'll be some new... They're not really toys to play with, but... <laughs> When we're like six cycles in, can you imagine how big the basic weakness pool is going to be? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shuffle the... It's, it's going to be bigger than your deck. <laughs> Shuffle your 46 card weakness deck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now for the main event. <laughs> oh, yeah. Speaking of marking things. Oh. <laughs> This is the one I've been waiting uh, all week to talk about with you guys since it came out. This is called The Soldier and the Secret Secretary. Previously, we uh, got spoiled with officially with Lola and Akachi, and now they spoiled two more. This is Mark Harrigan, The Soldier, and Min, um, Min, Min T. Fan. Yeah, is The Secretary. And... Let's see. We don't have our guardian player, so I'll go ahead and give this one to you, Sean, to read our new guardian investigator. All right. Mark Harrigan is the soldier. He's, of course, a uh, guardian investigator, has three willpower, two intellect, five combat, three agility, the veteran trait. You begin the game with Sophie in loving memory in play. Reaction, after damage is placed on a card you control, draw a card. Limit once per phase. Elder Sign effect is plus one for each damage on mark. And he has nine health and five sanita. And I'm fairly certain we have not seen a spoiled back of this card, right? We... No, we have not I, gotten I, a glimpse I, of his I, backside yeah, yet. Yeah, I was about to say, I, I sifted this article and I didn't see that. So... Uh, looks like pretty consistent card draw in Guardian. And our fir our first five fist inv uh, investigator, which is yeah, that can do yeah, a lot. Five of work. fist investigator was my experimental rock band in high school. <laughs> 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 so, uh, we probably need to talk about Sophie mm -hmm. before we talk about Mark, because just like Duke, it's gonna. I assume it's gonna play a pretty big role in how you play him mm -hmm. so i guess i'll do this sophie in loving memory is a signature card it's it's an asset uh so it is null costed item and spirit traded mark harrigan deck only sophie cannot leave play free triggered action take one direct damage you get plus two to your skill value for this test and forced if mark harrigan has five or more damage on him flip sophie so, that by itself. Okay, so, okay, okay. So, I gotta, I gotta calm down for a quick second here. I'm on record, I believe, uh, saying that I love cards, heroes from Lord of the Rings, uh, investigators from Arkham, that take a negative and turn it into a positive. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons mm -hmm. I love Agnes is because it's like, oh, hey, I'm gonna take horror. Let's do something with it, yo. So now we can get Mark, who is kind of doing... Uh, you know, something similar, where whenever he takes damage, he gets to draw a bloody card. And with this starting in play, you can just take a damage. And he's got 9 health, and he's got access to a ton of things that can take damage in his class. Even with the current card pool, I imagine he'll be getting more in the future. To get plus 2 to a skill test. Mmm. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Mm. You get double, double your... Your bonuses there, you get plus two to your skill value and the card at once. And the nice thing is it starts in play, so it's not something you have to search for. Mm -hmm. um, the key thing there is, though, it's one you take one direct damage, so mm -hmm. I do think it's something you have to be careful of, but you can pack some healing. I, I think this guy's going to make healing more um, useful, for sure. Yeah healing and okay so like this guy's this guy's nearing gloin right for you lord of the rings players like <laughs> he's yeah. very close this, this with sophie he's got healing in in faction mm -hmm. and uh and oh god what was the last thing i was gonna say oh yeah and now we have i've had worse as a thing as as kind of a another way you can mitigate damage and, and whatnot that you would take when it's not advantageous to trigger your ability mm -hmm. and get resources from it just like 
<laughs> he's gonna be a lot of fun to play <laughs> yeah is this is this the tank investigator we've been waiting for i don't know five sanity is tough it is five sanity is tough but there's a lot of ways to mitigate that now with guardian like that's, that's true yeah yeah it depends on what he can splash do we know that yet i don't think so we, <clears throat> we don't Oh. We do not. Yeah. That's why I was asking about the back of his investigator card. I'm like, wait, we haven't seen that yet, have we? Yeah. No. no we didn't. They didn't show either one of these new ones. So the key thing with Sophie is that when she gets five, when she flips, then you get minus one to each of your skills all of a sudden. And But then she flips back over if you ever get back down to four or less. So it's not permanent necessarily. I feel like whatever big healing of like this it's to me it feels so much like loin it's amazing <laughs> this, this might get me to play a lot more guardian uh because it's all about like getting the benefit off and then healing it and and i'm trying to think of uh what, what's what's the most efficient heal effect we have in the game right now is it strange solution uh yeah i don't know if you if you consider that efficient because you have to get strange solution and stuff like that. Sure, but, sure. But action so money we'll, wise, yes. we'll assume that XP is is not at a at a premium. Yeah, if you're if you're just talking like a straight up card with like action and resource wise, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I think that's the most efficient one. Emergency aid probably is coming up next. Yeah, yeah. Medical text only clears one, right? Correct. I believe so, yeah. I think you can do some smoking pipe shenanigans, probably, if you're able to put mm. that horror on some allies instead. Oh, well, yeah, wait till oh, your man. refresh phase, and then draw two cards? Oh. <laughs> Dude, if if he ends up being off-class survivor and can take Pete Sylvester, like, <laughs> holy, holy <laughs> balls. Sorry, Agnes, you gotta break up with Pete. <laughs> <laughs> I love that theme. I love that theme of Sophie, though, where it turns into "It was all my fault" when he starts getting down and out. And yes, <laughs> it's pretty. I cool. I actually, because yeah, Ian, you've read Feeders from Within, right? The the Arkham uh, novel. Not yet. I haven't gotten to that one yet. You haven't. Well, well. Let me regale you a small tale here. Uh, <laughs> I read it recently. It was fun. I mean, it's not like Shakespeare or anything, but it was fun to, to see the characters we know. Mark is is probably co-main character. The three main investigators in that one are Mark, uh, Carolyn Fern, and Diana Stanley. Mm, no wonder you started with that one. <laughs> <laughs> it was no accident. But anyway, the the whole the whole story here is that um, Mark's a soldier. He was involved in lots of different wars he was down in mexico and i think at that point uh some some ancient evil got loose they were called the feeders from within and they ended up taking his wife um and and he blames himself for it and throughout the entire present day presentation of the story of feeders from within he's he's constantly you know dealing with nightmares and guilt uh for for not being able to save his wife so yeah that's what that's all about it's pretty cool he seems like he's going to be fun to play, just mm-hmm. straight up fun. <clears throat> which is the yeah, he's not he's not quite as straightforward as the other guardian investigators, I think, which are more straight ahead. He brings some like shenaniganery <laughs> into the guardian class, I think. Mm-hmm. So his, his signature cards, other than Sophie, are the home front, which is a skill with four combat icons. It's a ton. Um, and if the skill test is successful during attack, you can move one damage from Mark Harrigan to the enemy. Look at that. That's healing and Yikers. damage all at once. <laughs> Yikers. And and he's she's swinging at five. Even if Sophie's flipped, he's swinging at four. Like, he's swinging at eight if you commit this to the test. He's hitting. I mean, he's just, he's hitting. So he he gets shotgun, right? That's how this works. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I always get it confused on the double or nothing. So with this double, if it's successful, uh, ooh. I forgot which ones apply and which ones don't. I think so because this is a result of the attack. It's not a reaction to it being successful. Yes, I believe that's how that rule goes down. But I will defer to Scott. I think it is because it's similar to uh, what is it? Think on your feet. What's the skill in Rogue? And also the card draw off the neutral skills works as we're the same way. So mm-hmm. if this skill test is successful, 
during an attack, whatever. So I think this does indeed get doubled with that would be double nice. or nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, Ian, are you hoping that his off class is rogue? I mean, that that would be nice, yeah. Or even if another <laughs> player throws down a double or nothing for him, but that depends on them being nice. <laughs> double or nothing with this with shotgun, just one shot Umerdoth. Yeah. Just like God. jam that shotgun down his mouth. <laughs> I mean, he has or... four freaking icons on this, plus two if he uses Sophie and a natural five. <laughs> it's just, yeah. it's so ridiculous. With uh... a couple vicious blows, <laughs> level two vicious blows, just. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. He's going to kill things, it turns yeah. out. Yeah. He's, just, he's yeah. just gonna kill things. I mean, I knew from kind of his persona in Eldritch that, like, if he ever came, he would be, like, the big time just outright killer and that's looks like what he is uh his weakness is shell shock which is simple revelation for every two damage on you take one horror Oof. which could that's hurt. gonna hurt yep i've had worse <laughs> oh, nicely done um so when it says on you this is on cards you control right or is it specifically on your investigator card uh, on mm. you would mean your investigator card specifically, okay. not your yeah, not on cards okay. you control. So this is still like you're probably going to be taking two to four horror on this, depending yeah. on when you draw it. But yeah, the most you can take is four. So. Oh god, it's still pretty rough. But that's a lot. <laughs> so let's take a look at our seeker investigator, and then we can circle around and uh, actually, why don't we look at the guardian cards first? We might as well. No sure. Yeah, why not? Scott, why don't you read True Grit? Well, if anything was convincing me, he's going to be a tank. Uh, it's a three-cost asset. True Grit uh, has a willpower pip. It's a talent. It says true, get, true Grit may be assigned damage dealt to other investigators at your location. It's just a flesh wound. <laughs> and it's got three health, no sanity. Mm-hmm. And doesn't take up a slot of any kind. No, yeah, no slot either. It's just... Fill your hands, you son of a bitch. Yeah. And it's not unique, right? So you could technically have two of these. It's not limited. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, The three cost is a bit high, I think, for me. Yeah. But. Not if you're running two I've had worses, bro. That's true. (laughs) Um, And the fact that it can take damage from, like, anywhere, Mm -hmm. that's pretty good. That might make it worth the three cost. Like, between this and, like, Xavier. Yeah. You're just like. I'll take it all! Yeah. No, yeah. it's definitely a good one of, for sure. If you're, if you're going to play that, that tanking mechanic, and you're actually mm-hmm. going to tank, um, then probably two of. I mean, if you think about this in Mark specifically, like, okay, three cost is three cost, but you're also drawing cards off this in addition to the in, the, in addition to the damage soak. So I think the efficiency in Mark specifically is very true. Quite good. Quite good. Yeah. So you make back that three money in a different way. Or the the cost is kind of reduced at what it could do for you in Mark. Absolutely. Well, in the click economy, the you draw uh, no, three no, cards, no. so the three no, resources. No. Are... Don't you put clicks in my mouth, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so the other guarding card is an interesting one. This is like an encounter deck tanking card. <laughs> Sean, do you want to read Let Me Handle This? <laughs> yeah. And to me, like, that's, like, this is this is the guardian spirit in, in one card, mm-hmm. right? All right, so Let Me Handle This is a level zero guardian event. Cost zero has willpower and combat pips, has the spirit trait. Fast. Play after another investigator draws a non-peril encounter card, but before resolving that card's effects. You are considered to have drawn that encounter card instead. You get plus two to each of your skills while resolving that card's revelation effect. This is really good in uh, Zoe. Especially Mm -hmm. because she, like a lot of those encounter cards, like you're playing with someone who's, you know, silly enough to bring skids to the table, and he has to test his willpower... (laughs) <laughs> and Zoe's like, "Oh yeah, bro, I got this." And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I see, I see when it's skids that's being when when someone's taking over for skids. I see it being more like, <sighs> "Move!" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I mean, it's it's 
So everyone else seems to be getting, at least from what we've seen spoiled so far, an actual treachery cancellation effect. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is Guardian's version of that. I could be wrong. They might actually get a legit cancel. But I feel like this is Guardian's version of that. And it's, it's like, it's... I'm sorry. This is exactly what I love about the faction design in this game, where it's like you kind of are doing the same thing, but it feels mm-hmm. so Guardian. This is Guardian's way of canceling something. They deal yes. with it, right? Like they just like <laughs> they handle it. <laughs> they don't just, they don't yep. run yeah. behind a ward of protection, acting all scared. Yeah. I feel like this is an example of a card that will like apply to a wide variety of situations which makes me like it more it's it's definitely not a niche card because i could even see cases where like you're in one location and the little seeker has gone off like a few locations away like you could play this to just take on that enemy instead instead of like oh i gotta cross two locations to get to you and engage the thing mm-hmm. and fight it like, like god damn it daisy uh, i told you to stay close <laughs> yeah i'll just cut out the middleman and just take it now yeah yeah, the ability to draw a monster too. Like, again, if you're playing Mark and it's looking like we're getting decent tank cards, this is another card in that tank that tank arsenal. So mm-hmm. it tanks the encounter deck, which is not a thing I would have assumed we'd be seeing. No, <laughs> it's uh, pretty good. I really want to know his off class, or if he's yeah, like a Dunwich, right? or what's what's the deal with his splash? Because that's going to make all the difference. Moving on to our seeker, our new seeker, Scott. Do you want to go ahead and read? Oh yeah, Minty Fan. Um, she is Seeker, obviously. She's the secretary. Uh, four willpower, four investigate, two combat, two agility. Uh, she's assistant traded, and she has reaction. After an investigator at your location commits a card to a skill test, that card gains a wild icon until the end of the test. Limit once for each investigator per round. And her Elder Sign effect is plus one. You may choose a skill card committed to this skill test uh, and return it to its owner's hand after the test ends. Uh, seven health, seven sanity. You can depend on me to guide you through the unknown. This is awesome. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> her Elder Sign ability is one of those that I think is going to fire a lot. And that's awesome. It's an investigator, so even in, like like it applies to herself that her cards get a wild icon once mm-hmm. per round. But then it's also a limit once for each investigator, so it's like everyone just gets a free wild pretty much as long as they commit something. Yeah, at your location. So there's a limit at there, your but, location. Yeah, but I mean you shouldn't split the party. So there you go. Well, and I think, okay, so another important thing to, to point out, though I'm sure you two have already gotten there, I needed to think about this for a second. This is each player, it's a per player limit, so that is a per player throwing the card. It doesn't matter which investigator is doing the test. So if you've got some, well, you say you've got your tank engaged with the boss enemy. Yes. And they need to do a bunch of high fight tests. Mm-hmm. And you can have a different person each fight test chuck a card for it. Mm-hmm. And then each one of those persons you know helping the same investigator will get a plus one to each of those tests so i think that's pretty sweet as well that it's got flexibility like that yeah uh i was really curious to see where they were gonna go because we have like the uber kluver and and rex and daisy's doing her tome thing but this is like another aspect of seeker which is like really honing on on committing skill cards basically she could really be that support investigator too like that support archetype yeah i mean she could take presumably she could take old book of lore she's holding a book i assume the back of her investor card doesn't say no tomes yeah <laughs> God, that illiterate cannot move. take tomes, <laughs> <No> tomes. <laughs> um but yeah yeah and, and seven and seven like hey that like if i had to ask for any health sanity stat line that would be it mm-hmm. yep um stats she looks pretty pretty sweet stats up top i really like Uh, Mm um you know if she's really gonna i think she's gonna be the one that i don't want to how do i say this hides behind someone who's gonna take enemies but can hold her own for investigating obviously if she's seeker um but also hold her own against treacheries that are gonna Mm -hmm. usually test willpower so as long as someone can handle the baddies um she'll be investigating helping you handle the baddies like, yeah, I think it's pretty good. 
Yeah, definitely. I think it's so much about her depends on what other cards she can take. Like if she if she's a pure seeker, for instance, that's going to be completely different than if she's seeker survivor. Like mm-hmm. her being able to take fire axe, like yeah, that changes what you could do with her. So I'm really interested to see the the backs of these freaking investigators spoiled at some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So far, I'm pretty sure Lola's the only one we've gotten. But that's just because you need to to even comprehend what she's doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it might be until we get the actual back until we find out. Um, her signature asset is one of the best signature assets, in my opinion. It's analytical mind, three cost asset, two wild. Uh, it's a talent. You may commit one card to each skill test performed by an investigator at another location. So you can transcend space and time and check a card to someone who's somewhere somewhere else. Um, and then reaction, after you commit exactly one card to a skill test, exhaust analytical mind and draw one card. Oh, really, really helping good. you really helping you to uh, actually commit those skill cards. The fact that this takes up no slots as mm-hmm. a signature mm-hmm. is super good. So she just goes like a full 10 to 12 skills in the deck right she might hit like like half the deck is skills yeah i assume yeah. so yeah it's gonna be pretty heavy skill i i wonder is her like back of the card can she take any skill mm. oh you think they might restrict down what oh, you, never know. you know what i mean oh, oh you mean like expand expand yeah like like she can take seeker and then zero to five skill cards that would be interesting because that would be ridiculous but pretty sweet <laughs> Yeah, she could pull off all kinds of stuff. Yeah. That would be awesome. I'm going to go with I doubt it, but that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. How much you also bet that she, like, super can't take try and try again? Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably not. Probably not. I love her weakness, by the way. I know we're about to get there, but the first time I read it, <laughs> I had to reread it twice. So she's yeah. the second seeker to have... Uh, a book, a tome is her weakness, and and this one is the king in yellow, act one. Uh, revelation, put the king in yellow into play in your threat area. Cannot leave play except through the reaction below. Um, so the kicker is that you can't commit exactly one or two cards to a skill test. So you basically <laughs> have to commit nothing. <laughs> none, none or, or three plus. more than two. Uh, so the reaction is after a skill test is successful in which Minty Fan has committed at least six matching skill icons, then you can discard the king in yellow. I mean, if you're if you're throwing down six skill icons, that test had better freaking be successful. If you pull the tentacle <laughs> on tentacle. that, that's going to be table flipping moment. <laughs> yes, it sure will. So I will poke in here too and say that... Uh, using her ability to add a wild icon onto one of those cards will count as one of those six. Mm, well, that's so, good. Okay, so this is really a five, presuming she hasn't used that ability three, for herself this Yeah, time. three cards with five icons. And wilds can be in there, too. Like, if you chuck an unexpected mm-hmm. courage and, you know, whatever. So, I mean, she's got access to uh, Inquiring Mind, which, you know, is going to help. Yeah. Yeah, that's Put the true. big dent in that <laughs> that six. Oh my god, guys! Minty Fan throws Inquiring Mind for four skill pips. Ooh. Seems yeah. okay, I guess. <laughs> I'm so excited to try her out. Okay, okay. Yeah, it, it, it's very cool. I mean, I love Rex, but I'm interested in trying something that's like a little less straightforward. I think <laughs> and just smashes <laughs> the game. Uh, okay, no stone. Oh, so we got a couple new seeker cards too to wrap up the article. Sean, do you want to read No Stone Unturned? No Stone Unturned. Clearly, this player needs to delve a little deeper. <laughs> uh, so it's a level two seeker event. Or, sorry, sorry, level zero cost two seeker event. It has a wild skill icon, insight trait. Choose an investigator at your location. That investigator searches the top six cards of his or her deck for a card, draws it, and shuffles his or her deck. So it's Mm. kind of like a deeper one-shot old book of lore. Yeah, I think it's the classic, like, fetch versus outright card draw conundrum. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm iffy. 
because we already have Old Book of Lore, but it also takes up a hand slot. This lets you dig deeper, but it's only one time. Oh, man. <laughs> That's going to cost you the resources. Yeah. I think I think this one gets better in Minty Fan because, specifically, she makes this a two wild card. That's true. For, for Icon. So, like, right there... But I mean, that's that's unfair to say. She makes everything slightly better. Yeah. When it's to skills, so. yeah, yeah. Maybe that doesn't save this. That's like in competitive games when people say, "Oh, that character's not good because he dies to removal." It's like, well, all characters do. Yeah, it's she's always the benefit is across everything. But yeah, but it having a wild icon. It, it could potentially help Min if you're like going hard. Do you really want to get her signature asset quickly? Maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But in that case, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I guess if you're searching the top six versus what is preposterous sketches, like drawing the top three. Draw three. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, I if know. you're digging for an answer, this isn't a terrible thing to have. And in Min, again, this isn't an unexpected courage. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One day when we get like a crazy combo deck, if this can go in it, it goes in it. Yes. Like it, it, you, you build your pieces and then you break the game, remove the encounter deck from the game, whatever. <laughs> crazy thing. It's going to be no stone unturned and teamwork. <laughs> it's going to be a roll in deck that breaks the game. I'm calling it right now. No stone unturned where you teamwork away a blackjack. <laughs> Just... Okay, let's do better though. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, in the know, uh, this one is for you, Scott. Alrighty. Uh, in the know is a three-cost level one seeker asset. Uh, it's got a intellect pip, and it has the talent trait, and it uses three secrets, or uses. Uh, action, spend one secret, investigate. Investigate any revealed location and play as if you were at that location. Schwa! Wow. Hmm. Are they playing Fury of Dracula in this art? <laughs> yeah, quite it does possibly. look like it. Or what's the one where you have to... Uh, was it Mr. Jack? You have to catch Jack the Ripper? Letters from Whitechapel? Yeah, that one. Yeah. The map looks old is the joke there. Yeah. Um, okay, so... This seems... I feel like this is a multiplayer card, right? Because the the yeah. idea that you would be at a, or not at a location that you want to investigate that already that that has clues on it that doesn't happen a whole lot in solo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not often. But in multiplayer, definitely opens up. This would be so good for Blood on the Altar. Oh, yeah. I was thinking like you you have a buddy hop into Orn Library and then you chuck like a. A deduction or a level two deduction at the Orn Library check, and just like <laughs> in one fell swoop, just grab all those clues. Yeah, totally. There are things hmm. to be done here. I'm wondering about Orn Library in this card, because you investigate any revealed location oh. in play as if you were at that location. Yeah, and you're absolutely correct that that does not hold water, Scott. Thank you. Yeah, that saves me from the internet. Now, I. Another combo for this, I think, would be with Rex, because Rex's abilities, if he succeed by two or more, he discovers a clue at his location. Oh my god, Rex is so dirty. So you could investigate your location and a farther one. So if you're playing Rex <sighs> solo, I could see that. Like Rex is so dirty. Yeah, Rex is dirty. I d- don't nerf him. <laughs> Matt, if you're listening, don't nerf him. He's fine the way he is. But he's really fun. <laughs> but just know that he's he's a dirty bird. He is, yeah. The bird's the word. I think this is an interesting card that brings out an interesting idea in, in Seekers where maybe one day the Seekers, like, uh, what's that card through time and space? Or something they investigate where they investigate every location at once? Oh, Deciphered Reality? Yeah, that one. And then yeah. in the know, like, maybe you just, like, sit in one space. <laughs> yeah. And... 
<laughs> and you say to your other players, go, my minions. Yes. <laughs> and flip those locations. Be fruitful. Fly, my pretties. Fly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. We need a Wicked Witch investigator. <laughs> <laughs> Whose signature asset is just like five copies of Flying Monkey. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. That would be great. But we all know the signature weakness for that one. So, Dislike of young girls? <laughs> well, I was thinking a bucket of water, but sure. <laughs> oh, that one. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> uh, yeah, because uh, this is just a falling house. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately do ten unpreventable damage. <laughs> just... oh, okay. Gotta make some memories of the lost test. wicked wist of the each. Yeah. <laughs> I said each. It's really east. Yeah, well, each. That, that's the word. Uh, okay yeah previously because i was thinking of seekers like you just because you have stuff like pathfinder like why not just move around and investigate stuff you're there already like that's why i kind of cooled on seeking answers but i think i think there is something to this and i think in multiplayer you could even develop a scout role more where the person especially with extra actions (laughs) like skids his role can just be to plow ahead reveal stuff and let the seeker do their thing Mm mm-hmm I feel like there's going to be a high end when Monterey Jack finally comes out. Wait, Monterey Jack? Yeah. Is that his name? In- okay, yeah. that's also a cheese, so I, yeah. I just doubted yeah. myself. <laughs> uh, so when Monterey Jack eventually comes out for this game, I feel like that's going to be his thing. Like, he's the guy on Pathfinder. He's going to be the seeker who's just like, ha ha, I'm everywhere. So I can see, like, a, a high experience build presuming he's based on mobility that just like goes and reveals all the locations mm-hmm. and then just deciphers reality and is in the know and just camps and just gets all the clues yeah if that's the thing that happens i'll be excited about it Seems also i'll probably eat cheese during that session <laughs> just because have to have to uh, yeah so that was a big beefy article they dropped a ton of spoilers on us at once well so i don't even know how many cards but uh definitely a lot to look forward to and it sounds like they might be uh spoiling the other two probably before the deluxe box comes out so i'm crossing my fingers for rogue what's left rogue and uh and uh survivor survivor yeah survivor yes yeah, but Diana Stanley's probably not going to be either one of those, so I don't know. My interest wanes. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be fine. Oh my god, if she ends up being rogue, I will punch Matt Newman in the face. <laughs> <laughs> with love, with love, but still. There's also, in the card fan above Min, there's also a basic weakness as well that's like pretty open there. I can't zoom in for some reason. Yeah, it looks like it's the thing that follows. It has some creepy art of a guy's or possibly a gal's feet and some shadowy fingers reaching out. Spawn and location farthest from you has three combat, three evade, two health, prey bear only. Hunter, when the thing that follows would be discarded, instead shuffle it into the bearer's deck. So you basically can't get rid of the thing every time you kill it. It's the thing that follows yeah. you. It, it follows, yeah. <laughs> That's gross. It, it looks like it does one horror, but it, the damage part is covered up, so I can't tell if it does damage. Yeah. Hmm. Ugh. Oh, man, if Mark Hannigan got that. <laughs> I mean, he can deal with it, but annoying. That's, uh, oh my god, what was it? There was a, shoot, no, I can't do this without Nick here, he'd have to remind me. There was a card in the Lord of the Rings TCG that did something similar, which is funny in a competitive game. Basically, it was, it it was Persistent Orc is what it was called. (laughs) It was this really cheap, fairly efficient for what you paid for, a little orc, but whenever it died, it went to the top of your opponent's deck. Mm. And in that game, you always even up, so you always draw back up until your maximum card Mm -hmm. size so it wasn't like that was killing a card draw i mean it kind of was but it was one that you didn't care about because in that game flooding the board with enemies is actually good because then you could overwhelm the ring bearer but anyway i don't know where that tangent was going it was just a similar mechanic that was (laughs) annoying so i imagine the thing that follows is going to be equally annoying yeah Mm -hmm. yeah this is a huge dump of cards it was amazing yeah very very excited for carcosa i actually started 
I know we're not in tentacle time yet, but this is actually related, so I'm gonna I'm gonna diverge for a quick second. I actually started the King in Yellow for the first time this weekend. Ooh, are you crazy yet? Uh, no, but that, admittedly, that's because I'm only like two stories in. But yeah, no, Ian, I think you I think you hit it on the head where the like there's still kind of like this eking horror and insanity thing thread running through it, but it definitely feels a little bit different, a little bit more below the surface, a little bit less. Less like, oh my god, a crazy monster that my mind can't comprehend, and more just like the king in yellow just makes people do weird things. Mm-hmm. So anyway, pretty sweet. So we're already at like an hour and ten minutes. We should probably move on to our uh, our actual discussion topic. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Scott, so since this since this topic was based on something you guys did with the First Planet podcast called the Traxis Report, would you mind would you mind leading us through this one? Yeah, for sure. So, uh, did we come up with a name yet? Do we have an official name? Because I feel like we're going to do this again. We'll, we'll figure that out. If you have suggestions. Well, we just put you in charge, so. All right. The, you uh, come up with a working title, at least. Miskatonic University Card Catalog. Um, there you go. Or Miskatonic <laughs> Library Card Catalog. Uh, so, one thing we did, in, like Sean said, from First Planet. Orin Library. Orin Library Card Catalog. Orin Library go. Card Catalog. There it is. Um, <clears throat> the Ulk. We so each each uh, host puts together a list for uh, so for this we're restricting it to the Dunwich cycle uh, so the box and the six packs uh, take all the player cards and in each class you list your top three your favorites and then your bottom three your underperformers um, and basically we go through and so Sean would say here are my top three Ian would read his top three Scott reads his top three. And then we discuss the cards, because usually, I mean, there's a couple that, like, there's one on everyone's list, and it's just like, yeah, it's a great card, what's there more to say? You Spoiler know. alert, it's Charisma. Yeah. <laughs> well, for my top three, I just put three copies of Charisma. So, <laughs> even in other uh, classes. Anyways, so we go each class, and uh, yeah, we just discuss, so... Sean, do you want to kick us off with uh, the old Guardians? Oh, do I? All right, so my top that I've that I've enjoyed playing with in the past cycle have been... They're all upgrade cards, oddly enough. So level 2 Vicious Blow. I've had worse. And everyone's favorite shotgun replacement, the Lightning Gun. I'm pretty close to you yep. as well. I got the level 2 Vicious Blow. I've had worse. Uh, but I put Brother Xavier in there. Oh, okay. Ian. <laughs> so my top three, I had Brother Xavier, I've had worse, and I actually had Emergency Aid is my number three. Oh, look at you. Ooh. Look at you with your, with your out there ness <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I found this exercise more difficult than I would for other LCGs just because of the leveling system. So I'm like... Something like Lightning yeah, Gun is true. obviously powerful, but how do I compare that against like a level zero card? And I kind, I kind of ultimately just settled on like, I don't know, whatever stood out to me is like super useful. All right, so so Vicious Blow, I will just say, I mean, there's not much to say about it. It does what it does. It makes a single fight action, you know, mm-hmm. 25% to 50% more efficient. Well, I was going to say, too, I think the reason I put it in over Lightning Gun is it kind of turns any weapon into an almost Lightning Gun. Like, sure. You know, like, it, it just takes any weapon and just makes it that much better. So, mm-hmm. Or it saves you when you don't have a weapon. Yeah, exactly. Turns you this into weapons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've had worse. I mean... Is that the only one that was on all three lists? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. It's so good. It's yeah, it's so good. Heal five, double emergency cash, kind of like. <laughs> I like it. It turns out that damage and horror are a thing that you take in this game. Mm-hmm. I mean, because I would play the thing if it just gave me the resources, but the fact that it cancels <laughs> it too is yeah. I mean, it costs a lot of XP, but it's worth it. That's totally worth it, and especially for the seekers, it's in like Zoe. I don't find that she has more trouble than any other investigator dealing with horror or, like, kind of general pulls from the encounter deck, but Roland can have a bad time. Mm-hmm. And this this is just, like, so... It's it's exactly what I was talking about earlier. It's just, it's just taking a negative, turning it into a positive. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
all for the mere cost of four XP. It helped my roll and survive a freaking beyond the veil milling and actually <laughs> live to tell about it. So, <laughs> oh man, I didn't even think about that. That's perfect for for cock blocking. Yeah, uh, beyond the veil. Someone in the Arkham chat weeks and weeks ago when I've had words came out, um, they somehow got two copies before they got into a a game that had the beyond the veil. And oh, nice. he actually had both copies of I've Had Worse in his hand. And just... Dude's just like, <laughs> draw, baby! <laughs> yeah, just, like, <laughs> drop both cards. He's like, okay, I'll take ten money. And then just play whatever I want for the rest of the game. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. All right, so... Emergency aid. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, the reason I like that one is... Um, I think the number one reason is because I'm a big fan of the beat cop and emergency aid is one of the only ways to remove damage from an ally, actually. Mm. So you can actually just scoop the damage off him and get extra use out of it. And I think more so than the actual damage off the investigators, it's like getting damage off allies and getting extra soak that I picked it for, which, which could be, could be a bit niche, but I feel like it's like the best healing uh, for my and for my money, even though it's like a one time thing, like I rather just have the one time and get it over with. Well, that's that's just it. Is like the big thing that I don't like about first aid is it's just like so like yeah you've got some flexibility there, but it's like oh I gotta sit here doing this like mm-hmm. I gotta play it and then I gotta take other actions to use it. Whereas it's like all right, just slap mud on it and let's go with emergency aid. Mm-hmm. And I, I always forget that it can heal allies, so I, I really like that. I assume that you're talking about using that with, like, level 2 beat cop. Mm-hmm. Yep. That, that's pretty solid. Yeah. And Xavier, too. Like, you can yeah. extend Xavier's longevity. Guard oh, dog. Yeah. yeah, there's a... All right. All right. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm on board. I'm on board. <laughs> I think uh, lightning gun kind of speaks for itself. It's a big boomstick. <laughs> it sure does. It makes a big boom. Yep. Yep. And I think both me and Scott had brother Xavier, which he's mm-hmm. just He was he was my number four. Now that is a tank. He's a tank ally that just Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he gives that, that willpower boost is just it's really boost. Again, helping Roland. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. Helping skids. Yeah. And then if he happens to go away, he can take out an enemy with him, which is nice. Which I've had some fun games where it's like you, you're it's almost like Agnes where you're like strategically planning like all right mm-hmm. when can I get Xavier to pop and when will that be advantageous and like <laughs> positioning yourself properly and it's it's fun to do. I've used him as well in Zoe because uh, oftentimes uh, when I'm using Zoe I might splash a shriveling or two and having her shrivel at five like just as if she's going to be the attacker having yet another weapon that doesn't take up hands so i find he works well with that too i I had to pick him just because i feel like he was huge for roland and also zoe like one of the key cards that that took him to another level that now they don't have to be quite as shy about going insane like within a couple turns he made Mm -hmm. roland resilient I mean, he was, like, I think the one thing that knocked Xavier down to number four on my list was just five cost is so much. Like, Guardian struggles so hard for for resources in the early campaign. Like, before you can get a hold of, I mean, what are they, I suppose Roland can take Milan if you're planning to investigate. Yeah. But beyond that, and uh, I've got worse, which you're not going to get access to until, like, maybe three or four scenarios in. Mm-hmm. Like they struggle for resources so hard because those weapons are spendy. Yeah, they are. Oh, they're spendy. Yeah, that's a fair critique. But he's still amazing. Yeah. All right, on my bottom, <laughs> or at, at at the bottom of my list, rather. <laughs> uh, you don't want to get me talking on that other one. Uh, so we've got Blackjack. Mm-hmm. Springfield nineteen o m nineteen o three. Mm -hmm. i'll talk about that one in a second and then this other one comes with an asterisk i'm gonna say teamwork but that's simply because no one's made me aware of a broken ass combo that they pulled off with (laughs) i was gonna say the same thing figures that out (laughs) as soon as someone figures that out i will take this off the bottom of the list but i feel like right now no one's got anything that's worth including it for four years from now 
Teamwork <laughs> is going to be the number one card from the Dunwich cycle. Yep. Something's going to come out, and it's going to get a rotten. Well, I mean, if, <laughs> like, if, if there's any card that like grows in utility with the card pool, it's that card. Yeah. My bottom three, the exact same. Blackjack, Springfield, Teamwork. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. Make it a clean sweep. Mine are exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, okay. Moving on to secret. <laughs> um. So, so, so we've covered teamwork. Unless Ian wants to add anything. No, I think it's just a card that has better days ahead than right now. <laughs> Ian, why do you think blackjack underperforms? <laughs> um, it's Besides, just... just saying the word blackjack. Yeah, I mean it's it's cheap, but there's just like a million basically every other weapon except for maybe the springfield i would want to take over the blackjack so it's just like there's no reason to ever i can do what the blackjack does like granted you avoid the damage to the other investigator yada yada but i'll either just engage that enemy or just roll the dice and tell the other investigator to suck it up if i hit them (laughs) (laughs) that's the real answer like in anything like in in solo there's no reason to take this no, card no. knife is objectively better than this card in solo which is saying a lot <laughs> it sure is <laughs> actually that was going to be the end of my argument i know it sounded like i had more to say but yeah yeah and the springfield oh i'm sorry oh i was gonna say yeah. i'm trying to find ways to make blackjack better maybe with vicious blow level two maybe i it, it, nope, it's, nope, we're doing that thing again where a card yeah. that makes any card better can't be applied to a bad card <laughs> yeah. to justify it. This is such a niche card. That's its issue. Springfield. So, okay. You know why this card's on my list? I bet you guys do. Um, Because it, has, it costs 4 XP, which is the same as Shotgun, and it's worse. Go one level deeper. Uh, True and accurate, but that's not what I was saying. Because you can spend one more XP to get Lightning Gun. Yeah. <laughs> and it does Which pretty much the same thing. Except better. Yeah. Just 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 straight up better. Um, I don't know. Maybe there's gonna be a build in the future. If we ever get a guardian or a character who can take a level four guardian card that has really high agility and they're kind of like a, like a dodge like a like a dodge and spank. Mm-hmm kind of character (laughs) Mm -hmm. then this card becomes playable but like okay if you if there's an enemy on the board and you're going to help uh, a teammate Mm -hmm. great you can kind of rely on it not being engaged with you but you've got this in two of your hand slots so you presumably are not running any other weapons yeah and then you pull an enemy off the encounter deck it's like "Mm. Mm. (laughs) hmm all right well i guess i don't if we ever get a permanent or an asset, maybe not permanent, uh, that just says, when you fight, you may target an enemy in a location attached, or, like, connected to yours. Like, basically giving you... Rifle a, scope? Yeah. You know, like, well, yeah, like, what if it's an asset, it's a scope attached to a weapon, you may use this weapon to attack a enemy at a location connected to you. The Springfield, I would say, gets a lot better. Yes, I would agree. But it still will have that moment where it's taking up your hand slots mm-hmm. and you draw an enemy from the encounter deck. Like, that's what kills it for me. Well, I guess, like, doing the thing again, right? You put a scope on a lightning gun. There you go, right? <laughs> yeah, <basically. laughs> yeah. I like that this thing exists because I like the idea of some kind of sniper guardian. But in practice, like I feel like every time you draw this, you're going to wish it was a different weapon. <laughs> and that's mm-hmm. like the mark of death for a card for me. It, like, solo, it's, tr- it's trash. It's too limited. Like, the hand slot thing, you could have a bandolier to have another weapon, but it's just too much for, like, just throw a shotgun or lightning gun in there instead. Like, it gets points for being, like, as cheap as the forty-five, but I there are not too many situations where I wouldn't just rather have the forty-five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, it's too niche, I think. Like, it, yeah. four-player, if you're going to be the guy that's killing things and you're in four-player and you guys don't split the party... Decent weapon. Cool. Uh, let's move on to Seeker. Ian, why don't you lead us off with your top three? So my top three for Seeker are Higher Education, Pathfinder, and I've Got a Plan. <laughs> hmm. 
Well, I'll just go ahead and be the one to, to add one up on each of those. <laughs> so I could pick Pathfinder as well, higher education. Um, but I also put in this card that I think is wholly underrated uh, currently, Dr. William T. Mailson. Mm. No, he's my number four. Mm. He's so good. Yeah, I, I'm with you there, Scott. Like, quite honestly, and I'm not even exaggerating, I would almost play him if he was blank. Like, just <laughs> the two health, two sanity. Yeah. In for, yeah, a lot a of the one drop, two, two. A lot of for the investigators what, I can take him, right? Like, yeah, for one cost. Like, Roland. <laughs> it's just, it's so good. Like, I feel like a mark of a good card is every time I see it, I have to rub my eyes to make sure I'm seeing the cost correctly. <laughs> yeah. Is this a misprint? <laughs> yeah. um, and then the fact that, you know, you can still tank damage and sanity onto him before or after using his ability. Like, it doesn't cancel out anything. It just... Oh, yeah. Amazing. He has... He's uh, one of the... So I've got him and Milan in my Roland deck with my my horse memory campaign, mm-hmm. and dude, he's just such a rock star because oh, yeah. like Roland wants to camp out on a location that has a clue anyway, so like Roland will see that rotting remains and he goes, huh, nope, try again, yeah. and then you draw rotting remains again. Yeah, I, I, I was <laughs> that was my next comment. Like I feel like he he increases the chances that you're going to see that card again by at least like. 50 yeah. percent <laughs> but you know what it's a free rolling of the dice right so yeah i mean it's an option you wouldn't have had that can potentially like you're probably going to trigger in those cases where like the treachery is maybe a lose or close to a lose and like to get another chance on that like why not mm-hmm. i mean he reminds me of black riders frodo from lord of the rings who does yes. basically the same thing and i was playing a game last night where twice in a row he redrew the same card <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing man. so it's definitely a thing but like i'd rather have a second chance than not have a second chance it's it's that and it's pushed into the beyond like i have no idea how discarding <laughs> three cards has such a high hit rate on the cards <laughs> shuffled back in yeah no it's matter how big ridiculous. your ridiculous yeah pathfinder i think we've, I, we've talked yeah. a lot and, about this yeah <laughs> it's just good it's just objectively awesome. Yeah. Action. It's not even action economy. It's just, it's kind of like a cheap, limited Leo. So. Mm-hmm. So I would then argue that it is less limited than Leo. Uh, because of how cheap it is. Yeah, fair enough. Higher education. I mean, the fact that it has a deck archetype that is literally the name of the card. Right, like, oh, what deck are you going to bring? Oh, higher education yep. somebody. Mm-hmm. And everyone's mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. I know <laughs> what kind of deck you're playing. Like, it's that influential of a card. Yep. It just changed everything. Yeah. It sure did. Oh, God. It made Daisy go from the bottom of the pack to, like, the high middle, I think. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. And, you know, it does decent things for, um, uh, for Rex as well. And Roland, like... Hey, yeah. our monster killer, who can also investigate, super doesn't mind being a little bit more mobile to get the, to that uh, that next enemy a little bit faster. Yeah. And then I've got a plan. This was my number four because it's it's great. It's it's it was Seeker's first real answer for combat and stuff. Yep. Yeah. And it's so so good. Like Seekers tend to run a little bit richer, I think, because if you're assuming you're running Milan, which I'd assume most Seekers are at this point. Mm-hmm. It's, they tend to run a little bit richer, so the three costs has never been too much of a barrier for me. And if you're playing Seeker the way Seekers play right now, you probably have a decent amount of clues. Mm-hmm. I mostly picked it just because it filled like a huge hole for Seeker. That's exactly it. It's like Seeker's big thing was like, oh, I can't handle any's, but now I can. <laughs> I can one shot a four health enemy. One shot and I gone <sighs> with an electric doorknob. <laughs> bottom three ian all right bottom three for seeker we have okay strange solution restorative concoction um second place exposed weakness and the other one is seeking answers uh you read my list in the opposite <laughs> order so <laughs> <laughs> not that i order these but yeah same thing 
Well, our, our Venn diagram is nearly a perfect circle. So I've got expose weakness, seeking answers, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say something really really out there right now. Deciphered reality, I think. Ooh. While okay, so let's start there first because okay. that's that's a thing. It's to contentious. Say. I, I know. Yep. I realize. Okay, so I like this card, and it is a bomb effect. But I feel like setting this up requires too much playing around for it to be truly worth it outside of maybe like four player Mm -hmm. so deciphered reality just just a quick run over it is the card that allows uh uh, you investigate with the highest shroud of a revealed location in play and you can potentially discover a clue from each uh revealed location yeah i think i agree with you sean um i was listening to some other podcasts, Drawn to the Flame or something. We have a blood feud with them. Anyways, um, <laughs> and they mentioned blood feud. they mentioned a story about Deciphered Reality coming in right at the right time. And it was awesome. But at the same time, like if you draw it right near the beginning of the game or something, or the locations are flipped, like it just, it's such a bomb card. But it's such mm-hmm. a bomb in specific scenarios at specific times. And it was very close to the bottom three. For me. Yes, I feel like this is this is Seeker's Dynamite Blast, except it costs five XP. Yes, mm-hmm. fantastic if all the stars align, but I don't know, I don't know. And like on top of that, I mean, it's got decent icons, so even with its conditionality. But if you're gonna chuck a five XP card for its icons, you probably chose poorly, mm-hmm. <laughs> or, or in dire straits. Seeking answers. So I'll read this card off just because I don't think many people no use it. No one's probably playing it. Yeah. Uh, the one cost event, investigate if you succeed. Uh, instead of discovering a clue at your location, discover a clue at a connecting location. I think this one runs the issue similar to the locations in Where Doom Awaits, where you can't use flashlight or uh, right of seeking with this. Mm-hmm. It's just a straight up naked investigate test. I think this card also gets completely eclipsed by In the Know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that we talked about earlier. Because that now all of a sudden can investigate any revealed location from where you're sitting. Yeah. And three times. This is like, okay, so that, here's my thing with this card. is It's a cool effect, and you can like maybe cheese your way around, what, Orn Library mm-hmm. or, or something with a high shroud. But only once. like. Yeah. If you're playing anything but true solo, like that's probably not enough of a solution for the problem you're trying to solve. Yeah, the kiss of death for this one is I included it in a couple of decks and just didn't play it a single time. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> that, that car is just too niche. Solo, like... Well, now you know what to take out for Pathfinder. Yep, solo <laughs> is usually like the location is not revealed that I want to investigate with it anyway and multiplayer like I have other investigators around to take on stuff anyway so I'll just sneak I'll just pathfind into the location and investigate normally expose weakness these you know what kills oh sorry go ahead Scott you actually had a thought oh no I was just gonna say expose weakness the one where you can lower their the enemy fight value it's fast but you have to kind of investigate sort of I don't know. It's better as a skill card, quite honestly. <laughs> yeah, agree. His pips are great. So, so it's zero cost, one XP. Uh, you can play it during any free triggered action window, and you basically you test your intellect against the enemy's fight value, and for each point you succeed, you're going to reduce that enemy's fight value for the one next attack. Yeah. And that's what kills this card for me. Yeah. That's what kills yeah. it for me is like, okay, great. So I'll hit it once. How many enemies that I care about only need to get hit once? If yeah. it was for the rest of the phase, then... Yeah, that'd be perfect. Yeah. I mean, if you have three clues on you, and you're fighting a Night Gaunt, and you use I've Got a Plan, but you do this first, eh, maybe. But that's a lot of balls being juggled in the air. <laughs> I feel like you've got stuff to increase that intellect test that just are already in your deck that you didn't have to spend an experience and wait for the right situation on. Yeah. And yeah. someone raised the point, too, of, you know, like, how much are you going to pass this test by? If it's by two, why didn't you just chuck this card as a skill card? Because it's got two, yep. two yeah. fists. So. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, if I'm going to help someone fight, I'll just pitch some icons instead. <laughs> yeah. Well, and like even okay, so even in the multiplayer scenario where you're you're weakening this enemy up for say the the spank tank that's going to come in and take care of it. Again, it's only for the next attack. Yeah. It's that's that is that is that is absolutely what kills it for me. So if we get a level two exposed weakness, that takes it to, you know, the rest of the phase. For, for the rest of the phase, yeah. Then I'm totally on board. Yeah. And that's what's cool about this game. In theory, you could set up some crazy like double or nothing shotgun play or something, but uh, <laughs> it, it, it's just too too. I'm not going to rely on that happening. Yeah. See, the problem with this one is I love the idea of it. Like, the mm-hmm. theme of this is awesome, it and is. it's so seeker. And I think it falls just slightly short of the mark of being efficient enough to include. But what's cool about this game, guys, is they could just make, like, a level 2 version of this and be like, all right, well, you know what? Maybe we maybe didn't do quite what we wanted to do with the first version, so here, have another one. And they can do that with like without errata. So, last card in the bottom... Ian and I pick a strange solution restorative concoction. For me, um, I'll kind of give my thoughts. Remind us what it does. Uh, it is the 4 XP. It comes with 4 charges, I think. And you can you spend a charge to heal to horror. Or no, heal to health. So the fact that you have to you know, discover the strange solution and then pay 4 XP... For a healing effect, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you look at the other strange solutions, and the the um, the agility <laughs> one is okay, and the combat one is pretty freaking amazing. Um, pretty good. Yeah, like I don't ever see myself taking not the combat one. I just never see myself taking the healing one, ever. Yeah. Um, there's so many other healing effects, and yeah, yeah sure they're not as good as uh, the restorative concoction once it's out. But you have to get through Strange Solution and then pay 4 XP for it. It's just, it's too much. Yeah. What if I build a companion deck for my mark? Sure. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I, it's, yeah f- fine if that's what you want to do. <laughs> Put Exposed Weakness in there too, why don't you? Like... <laughs> <laughs> now well, let's not go crazy. I was going to put in Seeking Answers. So. Okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, pretty pretty much you said it all, Scott. Just way too much effort and cost and experience for a healing effect. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so what would it take to make this worth four XP? Would it be two damage or two horror? Would it be three damage? Like what what's the breaking point for you guys? I'd say three or four charges remove three tokens from an investigator. So you can mix it up Oof. you know, two sanity and a, a health or something. Yeah something like that all right not, not that i'm normally in the business of redesigning cards yeah. i was just curious it's hard i mean because if you did heal three that's pretty powerful mm-hmm. and you don't want it to be overboard but two is just I don't know, it's yeah i think i just would have wanted something other than healing is the real answer yeah and you're comparing it against the other two strange solutions yeah. that's another issue right because you can only have two yeah, in your deck true. you're gonna pick the yep. fight ones let's be honest yeah you are yeah, you are. Because, like, why not just kill the enemy before you take the damage? Problem solved. Yeah, exactly. What's dead can't hurt you. Although I'm not sure that's true in this game. Um, Rogue, Sean, top three. <laughs> All right, top three. Caveat, uh, the only rogue I've played since the core set has been Jenny. So my top three are level two Switchblade, Liquid Courage, and Lucky Dice. Or are they? Ian. Top three for me are Lone Wolf, Streetwise, and Lucky Dice. Wow, we are so different. Um, <laughs> Switchblade. I trust Ian's way more than I trust mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, Switchblade level two, Golden Pocket Watch. I'm out of here. So we're all over the place. <laughs> no doubt. Ian, why don't we go through yours first? Because you're you are the most experienced <laughs> role player. Because you actually have mileage in the rogue class. <laughs> um, I have one campaign with Jenny, and that is literally it. I, I Rogue is my least played class. Well, uh, Lone Wolf turns out resources are good for rogues, and it it's like super dependable 
resources unless you're playing higher player counts which i don't generally play so maybe mm-hmm. if i was playing a ton of three or four player then it wouldn't make the top three uh street wise because it had a similar effect on rogue that higher education had on seeker um totally mm-hmm. changed a lot for them that all of a sudden they can actually investigate worth a damn <laughs> um mm-hmm. and make their evasion a lot more uh dependable and lucky dice just because i'm a fan of uh mitigating that chaos bag uncertainty and the fact that wendy can take it <laughs> just like how much mitigation <laughs> does a single deck need more more mitigation good god um i totally agree and um i came so close to putting streetwise in there just because yeah. my uh my most recent campaign was with my wife and she played jenny and street right streetwise did work like mm-hmm. man it's especially in where doom awaits yeah that was the scenario with jenny where like i had like streetwise and one other card and i basically just streetwise the whole game like that was how she won was like that one card so lucky dice sean you want to comment on that i'm trying to get all the cards i'm trying to remember all of them because we picked so many <laughs> yeah uh yeah it, i mean what ian said it's it's yeah. mitigation and it's good mitigation like it costs you it costs four xp right because it's exceptional mm-hmm. um i've actually only had this on the board once because again just the one Jenny campaign but it <laughs> yeah and and exceptional but when it's on the board like even in its eroded version it's it's good just like oh hi i have resources sure i'll spend them sure i will yeah switchblade 2 we had mm. on there twice. Uh, honestly, it's just a really cheap, really efficient weapon um, that gives you a combat boost and a damage boost that's reliant on the combat boost. So it kind of it's synergistic within itself. Switchblade level zero is garb. Yeah, like you you don't get Switchblade zero to go to Switchblade two. You just go straight to Switchblade two whenever you can you can get it. I think. Yep. Um, I particularly liked it in Jenny because she's kind of set up to to play around with the skills anyway. So mm-hmm. if you've got something to boost your combat, you can just kind of massage that number right where you need it to be to kind of be reasonably assured that you're going to succeed by two. Yeah. Liquid Courage. <laughs> this was coming from a purely like multiplayer standpoint. Mm-hmm. Like I had Lone Wolf in there, but I'm like, Ian's going to pick that. So I'll go <laughs> multiplayer with it. But I would posit that Liquid Courage is the single best horror mitigation tool we have in the game right now. 100% agree. Yeah, I wouldn't fight you on that. I, I just, I think it deserves a spot for the theme alone, too. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Absolutely. The murdered, you may say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I just I just really like it. Uh, it's, it's kind of a fun one-of to put in just about any multiplayer deck that can take it, because getting in a horror off Mm -hmm. just for a charge and it's just a cheap little one cost guy is good and i think most investigators stand a decent chance at hitting a two willpower test Mm -hmm. to get another horror off which is probably something they want if you're using it to begin with and then if they fail they lose a card and chances are they're probably okay with that compared to having that horror so i just think it's a super solid little and it's absolutely a theme win for sure I had a campaign where Wendy had it in her deck because uh, she was it was with Roland, and I just like the, the idea. orphan with the hip flask. <laughs> I just it's like here here, sweetie, hold Daddy's happy juice, you know, like, <laughs> and just grabs it from her every so often and just takes a swig. Yes, no, I can just hear like Wendy like sidling up to one of the investigators, and she like just randomly has like a, a low, deep Cockney voice, like. Oh, I tore a bourbon, governor. Yeah. Hands <laughs> oh. the flask over. All right. Um, I'll speak on Golden Pocket Watch, why I put it in there, because I think this card is going to be, just like teamwork, it's going to be broken someday. It's already quite good, I think, uh, especially like in a four-player game, like getting a whole other turn, essentially. Um, I think it's going to lead to some awesome combos. Super expensive right now. I was about to say, is it... Is it not the most singularly XP intensive card that we have in the pool? Yeah. Like, does anything, I'm any single sure card, cost more than eight XP? No, I think it's yeah. I think it's number one. It's. I mean, it's real good. Like spending that much XP on it, though. Like, I absolutely one hundred percent sure that it'll get discarded 
for an encounter card effect every time I play it. Yeah, probably. It's it's got like a magnet on it. Um, I just think it's gonna be broken. Rogues have some like big bomb XP cards, so it's kind of hard. Like between Lucky Dice and Golden Pocket Watch and Ace in the Hole, it's kind of hard to narrow it down to like the best. Yeah, that's why we run delve too deep in Jenny, guys. <laughs> Amen. And then um, I'm out of here. I find anytime I play Rogue or uh, or Wendy, really. Um, who's half rogue? I put I'm out of here instead of uh, manual dexterities now, just because it does essentially the same thing. I miss out on the card draw, but I've had it work multiple times where I'm just like, I'm done the scenario. I just don't want to trod over to the end, and there's nothing for me, and it's just risk on the way. So I'm just oh, I'm out of here. Game's over. Yeah, I agree. I I was kind of iffy on this card until you pointed that out like hey you're sacrificing the card draw but this is now just a manual dexterity yeah. that has another situational mm-hmm. but awesome use and yeah I, i've been pretty much doing the same thing bottom three ian bottom three for rogue i had contraband hired muscle and joey the rat i had uh contraband hired muscle and think on your feet and for my part, I had Contraband, Hired Muscle, and Upgraded Opportunist. So, so Contraband. Just, just... Super expensive? Super expensive and super like, hey, this has to hit at the exact right moment or it's not going to do anything! Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why not just yep. run another weapon? <laughs> <laughs> um, anyone want to speak more to that? Maybe that, maybe that break in combo... Yeah. Or that break in. That, Four that years combo. from now, when you teamwork <laughs> over something that gets contrabanded, when you get when you get Akachi, level four right of seeking. Oh wait, contraband doesn't work on spells. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Hired muscle. It kind of hurts me to put on this because I did see an awesome uh, lone wolf. Or not sorry, not lone wolf. Uh, dark horse Jenny build, where she used hired muscle. Like she used her reaction to get that one resource. Or no, uh, even two of them, and had two hired muscles out, like all the time, and she was just—that's <laughs> how she kept Dark Horse going. But it's just not worth it, I don't think. Yeah. No, I mean, if it had some other text, yeah, or maybe some sanity, I could see it. But I don't know. I just think you can get that that boost to the combat skill in way better ways than eating up an ally slot mm-hmm. and a resource. Yeah. Yeah, for me, Hired Muscle isn't a bad card, like, just by itself. Like, it's a cheap form of combat boost, as long as you don't let it hang around a long time and kind of a soak. But the problem for me... It, it, <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta have last call at your bar. Yeah. Clear all the Hired Muscle out. Yeah, get, get them out, throw them in front of a, a night gun. Um, but that, for me, it's just a matter of Rogue has better ally <laughs> options that i'm just not gonna yeah <laughs> put there that that's basically why joey the rat ended up on my list too there's just better rogue ally options it's too hard to find and... room for stuff that's not amazing joey seems like he'll be another one of those cards where he might get broken in a few years mm-hmm. from now. yeah when you combine him with attorney urkel but, yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> But yeah, I, I agree with your pick there, Ian. Well, yeah, like I like the idea of him that you could just not put stuff down until you really need it, and then you could just like throw a weapon out when an enemy pops up. But I'd just rather play Leo and get the extra action all the time. And yeah. the other problem with Joey the Rat is he's too expensive for what he does. I think. Yeah, I mean he does give every weapon essentially fast. For the cost yeah. of a resource, so you're either spending a re- an action to put out a card, or you're spending a resource to put out a card. Yeah, I feel like I feel like if if this game, as it continues, and I'm sure it will, because it's just going to happen with a card pool, that economy just tightens up for everyone, and you can kind of have a really resource intensive build with a fair few items. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he gets better, but yeah. not there yet. Sean. Not a fan of the uh, opportunist win by two or more deck. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a fan of opportunist in general. Mm-hmm. No, actually, I, I like the idea of it. The theme is really cool. Yeah. But I, 
it's it's the opposite of of what i like so like what i like is like hey something bad happens to you let's make it somewhat more positive yeah or this is more like hey something really positive happened to you let's make it more positive it is the literal definition of a win more card so it's cool i still have not gotten like the succeed by two or more reliably deck to work in a way that i like but it might happen someday one day if there's uh, oh hey i suppose jenny could take or not jenny wendy could take try and try again yeah with opportunist okay all right there's there's a deck i have to try <laughs> god damn it is it, is it really the, do you no, want to prob- probably not okay if anyone else wants to try it though and call into the mythos busters hotline you're welcome to do so i'd love to hear mm-hmm. how that deck performs um i put think on your feet um i don't know it's it's an okay card but it just it's just so boring <laughs> okay so i always i always mix up the effect of think on your feet right. with bait and switch think on your feet you, you move yes. when an enemy spawns yeah. at your location mm-hmm. yes okay the one thing that someone brought up about this too is they were playing the last one in night of the zealot devourer below yes when you're at that middle location and all the cultists show up they spawn mm. there but if you play this and move to the <laughs> inve- into the uh the ritual site because oh, man. the the agenda card you're reading the back the next agenda card is when investigator moves to the investigate or the uh the site flip this card you've already moved there so the timing doesn't work so you actually have to move back out and back <laughs> again <laughs> that's terrible so that that that's what killed it for me <laughs> <laughs> that's specifically yeah that's specific specific. Specific. That specific interaction, garbage. So, uh, I'm actually a fan of Think on Your Feet, and it's for a couple of specific builds, which are both Jenny and Skids that are very like evade heavy, and their whole strategy is not fighting but just avoiding enemies, and then it mm-hmm. works out. It works out good in that particular build. Yeah, maybe I'm completely wrong. Like, Rogue is my least played class. Uh, I don't think but... you are. Though. Okay. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. My, my experience with it is because I included it with my first Jenny build, which is more fight, and then I just never used it. So it's basically like, unless you're specifically building to dodge enemies and move around, then it's not going to do anything. Yeah, I think I like it in Wendy better than anywhere else. That's fair. Speaking of bottom three cards and all crap cards, uh, Sean, you want to read your Mystic cards? <laughs> oh, your powers will not work on me, Scott. I'm going to go ahead and and call it here. This is going to be the one where we are most divided because Mystic has just such a weird, awesome set of cards. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's no way we're all going to pick the same Z, same Z's here. So, yeah. okay. So, my top three are level zero, Rite of Seeking, level five, Shriveling, and of course, Delve Too Deep. All right. Well, mine is level one, Rite of Seeking, Delve mm-hmm. Too Deep. Shriveling level three. <laughs> yep. Okay. All right. All right. Ian. Delve too deep. Yep. <laughs> right of Damn seeking it. level one. <laughs> Damn it. Um, but level zero, guys. I, level zero. Uh, yeah, level zero. Sorry. I did switch up the third one, which is the jewel of however the heck you pronounce that, Ariolis. Um, um, yeah. Okay. Okay. So. All right. So way more overlap there than I than I anticipated. Well, wait till we get to the bottom three, because that might be... Yeah. that might be it um so right of seeking this is this is everything we said about i've got a plan swap seeker for mystic and it makes sense here yeah. it's like it's the hole they needed filling and oh man it filled mm-hmm. yeah. delve too deep do you guys get like getting extra experience <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah okay I don't have much else to say. Yeah. On Delta Deep. It's like I feel like I don't need to even defend this card to anyone anymore. Anyone who's actually played with it, they know. Yeah. I guess I'll defend it cuz no one's going to believe you anymore, Sean, but I I I was somewhat like skeptical, but once I started running it with like Solo Agnes through Dunwich and just like it was just there were several scenarios where I where I used two copies and it, definitely the most XP out of any campaign it 
the 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 thing with the campaign is like the experience is so random like you can't control it it's like on a monster that comes out and maybe it doesn't come out for you that scenario Mm -hmm. Uh, but delve well and especially in solo yeah it's way more swingy so delve too deep is just a way of ensuring that you get some xp and then ian what was your number three i jewel of aria yeah the jewel (laughs) that was one i was putting i was considering putting in just like it has a very powerful effect. Yeah. It wasn't one that I thought too much about until I started a rolling in gym campaign. Put it in gym and oh, it's so good. Especially if you can get it early. Like it is a card draw and resource engine in one. And it's fun it's fun when you draw Jim's elder sign and turn it into a skull just to trigger it. It's it's it, <laughs> it, it, it's good. Like he ends up with a lot of resources and cards when you need it. Yeah. I I love this card, but I will oddly admit that i still have yet to actually play with it because i've been having such a weird tryst with all manner of dark horse decks <laughs> lately mm-hmm. like i i haven't had anyone who i was not playing dark horse with who could take this but it's awesome it has to be awesome especially in multiplayer right because it's oh, yeah. just like the more tokens you're getting revealed the the greater chance you have of this hitting yeah. mm-hmm. are you running this with grotesque statues ian mm-hmm. yep okay so relic That's hunter tech, agnes no. is that what we're gonna hear next <laughs> you'll have jewel and rabbit's foot and, yeah okay maybe not <laughs> and then okay shriveling um you pick level five i pick level three i i sure did i like that there's more damage on five uh, and it gives you a slight mm-hmm. more willpower boost i don't like the two horror and that's what did it for me mm-hmm. that i like the shriveling three better in Agnes, even? Yeah, I mean... Because I feel like like 90% of the time when I'm running Agnes, I have level 2 Peter Sylvester, and that extra horror is just no thing. Yeah. Um, I was mainly playing... Like, for the last couple months, I actually haven't played Agnes. I've been trying to work Jim out, um, mm. which has not been going well. <laughs> um, <laughs> that sounds dirty. <laughs> but yeah. but it, was, it was substantial. When I switched from shriveling to shriveling level 3 in gym... <laughs> Not helping the innuendo. No, sorry. Pardon me. I was trying to have a serious conversation. <laughs> you came say. to the wrong place. <laughs> I say good day, sir. Um, Tell me more about your substantiality. Yes. <laughs> but no, it was like it was a huge difference uh, with that willpower boost um, from shriveling three and shriveling five. I was just like, it, for one extra damage, I'm risking another extra horror. I don't know. It, it didn't seem worth it to me to make that jump. So what, what makes this for me is, again, and this is coming from someone who is most likely going to be playing this in Agnes. Like, Agnes has no interest in level 3 shriveling because she just doesn't need the willpower boost and you're not getting anything extra out of the damage. Mm-hmm. Well, level 5, like, okay, so you pull... Most of the time you're probably going to have Pete Sylvester out, level 0 or level 2. Mm-hmm. You're gonna hit that test most of the time. Like oh, you're you're yeah. hitting, you're hitting like eight willpower at a minimum. Nine, if you've got Pete Sylvester out, you know, plus whatever gets chucked. Yeah. If you pull a token, you're doing four damage with a single hit. Mm-hmm. This is this is like a Chicago typewriter or or dare I say it, almost a lightning gun mm-hmm. for three cost. For three cost still. Yeah. It's so good. And it does cost five XP, but it also has... There is that. But you can go from shriveling three to five, so you you don't have to pay the five in one big jump. You can... And you know what else? Hmm. Oh, Delve Too Deep. You can play Delve Too Deep. (laughs) Okay. I I just need to play an Agnes, I think. Yes, I think think that is a qualifier. I don't think Jim... I don't know. See, I God, I really wish he could get his trumpet out reliably. Yeah. Because if you could get his trumpet out reliably, then Jim likes this too. Because like he can just heal that horror off with no issue. Yeah. Man, if shriveling was actually like the level three, if it was at level two, higher education Daisy would be broken. Yeah. But that was that was one thing that I was like, oh. I know. I'm sad, happy that it's out of her reach. Yeah. Uh. So bottom three. Sean. Uh, I've got Clarity of Mind, 
Bind Monster, and level four Right of Seeking. Ian? I also have Clarity of Mind. Um, uh, this The Mystic, I think I had the hardest time picking the worst cards. Clarity of Mind is clearly the worst, and then I had trouble finding another two. But I actually picked Shriveling 3 as my worst. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think Whoa. it's one, because Agnes doesn't need it, and then my particular gym campaign, I just play him as a, basically a cluver, so he doesn't do any attacking, really. So it was also <laughs> kind of not needed, so... Right. Yep, and then ritual candles. I like the card, but uh, Ooh. we can talk more about that one. All right, mine was um, clarity of mind, making the hat trick, uh, <laughs> defiance, and ward of protection level five. Ooh, Ooh. <laughs> yeah, well, I almost put that in my top, yo. <laughs> Controversy. Okay. All right, so let's get clarity of mind out of the way. Like, what does this have going for it? It's a spell. It's it's too damn slow. Yeah. It's so slow. It's so slow. It's like you cannot afford the actions. No one has time for you to be doing your meditation while we're trying to get this investigation done. <laughs> be, just be proactive. Nut up and spend the XP on level 2 Defiance and you will be a much happier person. Or not Defiance. Uh, fearless. Yeah. Level 2 Fearless. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And you'll be a happier person. Yeah. There's a lot of better horror healing effects in this game. I mean, for, for the love of God, take Smoking Pipe. Please, take Smoking Pipe before you take Clarity of Mind. Right of Seeking Level 4, Sean. Yeah. So, right of Seeking... Okay, so this one, this one comes with a caveat. In 4-player, this one's worth it. Okay, fair. Accepting that situation... Uh, spending 4 XP to increase the cost to play in in anything but 4 player is just too situational. Great, you get the extra clue compared to what normal Red of Seeking gets you, but oh man, I mean 4 cost for level 0 Red of Seeking is a big enough tempo yeah. hit anyway. Like, it ends up being worth it just because Seeker needs it, mm. but 4 is 4 is substantial. Taking this to 5, just like ugh. And again, it's just that situation where the ability to grab three clues is awesome if you can consistently be sure that that's what you'll need to be grabbing. Mm. But I think in a lot of cases, that's not the case. So I actually, li- I actually like Rite of Seeking level four. Um, but again, this is a kind of a build specific thing where it's my Jim Kluver. <laughs> so basically his role is doing nothing but gathering. He's c- trying to be like a, uh, a substitute Rex. And so Roland does all the fighting and so Jim has like deduction and right of seeking. So the level four plays into like uh, getting clues fast. And that was basically how I was able to get all the stuff out of the ritual chamber on like the last two actions before the last agenda advanced. So. And this is a two handed campaign. Yep. You find mm-hmm. getting three clues was worth it most of the time? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. So bind monster great card in theme mm-hmm. yeah it hurt me to put this one on there because i love i love the card and it's a fun card yeah but we we've talked about it uh, we did on the av club extensively like for all the shucking and jiving you're doing to get this card to work like it is just easier for every investigator who can take this to just kill the thing yeah <laughs> yeah theme home run though i love it yes yeah. it's it's an amazing card in concept and in design defiance i found this one that's you (laughs) to just be like hey maybe guess a certain token and then maybe this will be beneficial but maybe not it might not be worth it like it just it's i don't know you're adding randomness on top of randomness to possibly avoid a random effect like it just i don't know Get out of here with that. What if we got like a level one or level two that was ignore all the special tokens except for the autofill because they can't do that. But Oh, that'd be amazing. I think. I could see that. I could see that. Yeah, I still feel like we're going to get an asset at some point that like freezes a chaos token in Mystic and you can like for some cost keep it attached to this card. Yeah. And, and in, like, the more manipulation of Chaos Tokens we get, the better this gets. But I think at this point, with, like, just 
what grotesque statue mm-hmm. i i don't think this is worth it quite yet i tried this quite a bit in my gym build i think i only ever hit with it once yeah i think it's a deck space thing i could see maybe in harder difficulties which i haven't really dipped my toe into that maybe there's some like super bad tokens on key tests that you want to avoid but pro tip there are (laughs) 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 hey what if what if what if what if men can take this then this becomes an unexpected courage that Hmm. kills one of the special icons yeah that's interesting yeah that's that's slightly better right yeah um ian what did you have that we haven't mentioned yet oh i had ritual candles which is a card that i like but the two strikes against it were one um taking up a hand slot and then two Mm -hmm. i just feel like in a lot of cases you're going high and up enough over the test that ritual candles doesn't make a fundamental difference for like success or failure of what you draw yeah, I liked them for a while in my gym deck, and I had two of them, and then I was like, eh, I'm gonna drop down to one, and now I'm even questioning putting them in. Like I slowly, I I realize the math behind it makes the bag a little bit better, um, mm-hmm. but it's n- like with Jim, you've got two more plus ones in the bag. Essentially, yeah, right. So, you know what? You know what? Ritual candles is to me. Hmm. It's a placeholder for any deck that's going to take grotesque statue. <laughs> that's pretty much what happened to them. <laughs> I was like, well, yeah. out with the candles, in with the statues. So, yep. All right, Ward of Protection level five. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll explain to you yeah. why. Um, yeah. If you look underneath the price of the card, it has five XP dots, and that's <laughs> expensive as f for what this card does. I think the original... But, but, but delve too deep, yeah. Yeah, but you know what, though? Like, <laughs> the original Word of Protection is by and far good enough. I'd rather spend that 5 XP on so many other things than a level 5 ward. Hmm. It, I, I get that it just straight out cancels a card, which is nice. Um, but ugh, 10 XP to have two copies in your deck to make that reliable? Yeah... I do think five is slightly, slightly steep. Yeah. I could have seen this at a three or four. Yeah. Super powerful, but yeah, it's a bit expensive to the point I haven't been able to take it yet. In my horse memory campaign, I almost took this, but then I bought another red-gloved man instead. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, the, the, the biggest thing for me is the level zero one is just still so good. Yep. And it costs nothing. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that's my issue. All right. Um, Survivor. Uh, I guess I'll jump on here. Start with my top three. Um, I'm I'm guessing most people will guess this, uh, but Dark Horse, Fire Axe, Peter Sylvester too. Sean. <laughs> that was my list until I decided I wanted just to just mix it up a little bit because I assumed that we'd have some overlap. So I've got Fire Axe, level two Peter, Peter Sylvester. And then, uh, just for just for kicks and giggles, because I have played her in a multiplayer game, I'm gonna go Aquina, level three, Ooh. because she is awesome. Ian, what are your top three? Dark Horse, Fire Ooh. Axe, and Peter, level two. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so this will probably be pretty quick. Fire Axe. Have we ranted and raved enough I, about how good this weapon is <laughs> and how versatile it is? Yeah. I feel like we have. Okay. Yeah. It's but just good. in yeah. case. <laughs> if your investigator like, needs a weapon and they can take fire axe, that's probably the answer. <laughs> so. But I think the thing about this weapon is like how insanely flexible it is because it has so much variability in how much you can affect the test itself. Yeah. Like you could give yourself plus six to this test if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. And then, if, you know, presumably you're playing around that, that kind of zero resource mark, which chances are you are if you're including this, then you get the extra damage out of it. I don't know. Yeah. I was dubious when it came out. I was pretty lukewarm on it, but I am firmly, firmly on Team Fire Axe. 
as I feel like most of the community is. Yeah, that that's kind of how it was for me. Like, I tried it, like, one game, and then I was like, oh, I'm kind of lukewarm on it. And now I regret ever being lukewarm on it, because it's so good. And <laughs> it, it's the perfect weapon for the investigators that were weaker. Um, like, I have mm-hmm. Wendy with this, and she kills people now, and just, you know... Uh, someone like ash can can use it for the times they can't use duke and it's just yeah there's just so many uses oh for it. god or agnes forbidden axe mm-hmm. oh it's amazing <laughs> so dark horse i mean it's kind of like higher education it's one of those cards yeah. where it's like this <laughs> is a deck archetype named after a single card and i mean even usually like we built a deck around this you've played through a campaign with it um, it's an incredibly challenging card to play. Um, it is. I'm so not good enough for it. I'm like 80% there. Yeah, it takes time. Like, I, I don't think I'm there either. Like, I just, there's so many, so many learning points every single game. Mm-hmm. But yeah, just a blanket plus the one. The one thing I will say against it mm-hmm. is that unlike uh, higher education, which we, you know, whose virtues we extolled, Dark Horse, while it inspires uh, an archetype, is not a permanent card. So, yeah, I've, I mean, I've had several games where this deck I've built around Dark Horse does not see a Dark Horse. <laughs> Maybe because it's too dark in the background? That can be, oh, slightly lighter horse, backlit horse. <laughs> backlit horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's an awesome card. Mm-hmm. I think I've played so much of it lately that I'm, I like it, but I am I am excited to play some non dark horse decks yeah. in the future. Yeah. Like, hey, I like I like having resources once in a while. Yeah, we're playing a mindless deck like uh, Agnes or something. Oh God! Uh, Speaking I of Agnes, know. Peter Sylvester too. I mean, it leaves you mindless <laughs> because of how hard you work. Uh, Peter Sylvester too. I mean, I mean, yeah, two stat boosts. Plus horror soaking, yeah. For three costs, <laughs> it's yep. it's ridiculous. But the thing is, is like okay, so that that is amazing. But you also have to consider, and like, I don't know. So part of me wanted to say like he's imbalanced, but you have to consider the two stat boosts that he gives you are the two stats that are indirect game movers, right? So like, combat helps you get through enemies. Intellect helps you get clues and advance the game. Mm-hmm. Well, power and agility are a little bit more nebulous in kind of their ability to advance you through scenarios. Like, obviously, you can make use of them. Yeah. But it's not like if there was an investigator, if there was a three cost ally that gave you a static boost, plus one boost to intellect and combat, that is a whole different plane of crazy awesome. Yeah. Those stats that you're getting with Peter, they're the defensive, defensive stats. stats. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's no surprise that the, the three cards I. The three cards I picked are the ones that let me take Wendy through the whole Dunwich campaign successfully. <laughs> um, yeah, but when you have like Peter too and Dark Horse, it's like all of a sudden your willpower and evade are just at crazy levels. <laughs> You're like that. Uh, He's good. That naked oiled man from Family Guy. <laughs> oh, can't catch me now. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'll see you next year. Yeah. A Quinn level three, Sean. I so yeah. close to making my top three she's okay, she's okay. really good like she's really good and she she's what we wanted out of a quinna level one yes but with a reduced cost and an actual usable ability yeah in solo as well as in multiplayer she's super good agreed and 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 especially it, the the campaign that i've played uh, with her that that has had success i played with charisma mm. so like having peter and aquina on the board oh. it's just like i i just don't care about many things <laughs> oh is there an enemy there i didn't feel anything it's like what like a three-year-old I'll take all the horror you. on peter uh except for one which i'll deal to aquina oh and you take two damage now all right then i'll fire axe the rest of you and i'll move on with my day yeah or i'll make you punch yourself with aquina <laughs> sean bottom three bottom three uh so i've got fire extinguisher Mm -hmm. bait and switch and oops i've got bait and switch oops and lure ian i have oops bait and switch and fire extinguisher same as sean (laughs) uh so 
Bait and Switch. This card's so bad, I actually already forget what it does. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, Evade, if you, success, so if it, you succeed, it's... push the enemy away. One location. Okay. Non-elite enemy. Yes, and that's that's the big piece. Like, again... Like the old, I think most of the enemies that you care to use this on are going to be your elites. So the fact that it, and, and I get why they have to throw that on because there are some enemies that you just you should not be able to cheese. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that also kind of it diminishes the card. Yeah, I feel like all these ones fall into the like Trixie Survivor Toolbox category. That there are situations for all of them. That the problem is like there's all these other times where they're just going to be in your hand and not worthwhile which is which is too much you got to build for the consistency most of the time so mm-hmm. <laughs> like oops yep yeah so hey you're a survivor who has to have more than one enemy well technically you don't have to have more than one enemy but it helps uh oh wait does it say another enemy engaged with no you just to just a different an enemy, enemy at your location oh, okay so that's slightly better yeah. okay so you still have to have two enemies at your location which depending on how many players you're playing is not an easy thing then you have to have two resources. And then you also have to be swinging with an attack that's worth spending those resources to still land if you miss it. And if you're gonna... If you stand a decent chance at missing it, chances are you shouldn't be taking it anyway. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know who this goes in. Like, if we if we finally get that, like, survivor tanky character who's just gonna take all the enemies and occasionally swing at one, maybe... And I mean, if you were going to fail by two or less, if you just chuck this in the skill test, you would have hit it. Yes. <laughs> yep. Because it's got two fists. Like, I just... Yeah. It's it's amazing, because this is basically the combat version of Look What I Found, right? Yes. But it's so much worse. Look What I Found is amazing. You know what? If we ever get a campaign, or a, sorry, a, a mission scenario, whatever, a uh, scenario where... You have one or two locations, and there's just swarms of enemy coming out. Like that's the mechanic of it, where you know you have a couple of gators, and their backs are they're back to back against each other, like in those old samurai movies, you know, and they have to defend off this circle of enemies. Maybe. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah. The thing is, look what I found. Lets you do what you wanted to do, but better. And this like takes what you wanted to do and has you do something else, which might not even be possible so and you definitely don't want to spend two resources on nope so lure i put in because i feel like similar to barricade is it's got some neat ideas and neat tricks but i don't think it is ultimately worth it um to go through all the hassle of putting a lure here then moving away it's like i don't know doesn't do it for me. I, d- I don't think it's efficient in what it's trying to do. I think the only place I could see it is in <laughs> that mythical Dodge Tank Wendy that I've yeah. been thinking about, but have still yet to actually do. Yeah. Where she can, like, lure and then elusive away. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I think three or four player Dodge Tank Wendy is probably the sweet spot. Um, and then Fire Extinguisher, you guys had it on. I almost put it on, um, but honestly, I think... I've been trying to build the Dodge Tank Wendy, and that one I actually I'm okay with more so than even Lure. Really? Yeah. Okay. So for Dodge Tank Wendy. So, sure, sure. Okay, so for Dodge Tank Wendy, why why would you take this over level two Survivor Instinct or Survival Instinct? Um, because it's another Survival Instinct, <laughs> <laughs> and it also has the ability to smack someone in the head if you have to. As does Knife, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> it does, but I'm not putting Knife in because Knife also doesn't have the other power of Fire Extinguisher. Fair enough. Yeah, in that specific build I can see that, but the problem is, like, if you're not going hard in focused on that tactic, like, yes. Survival Instinct is just objectively better. I agree. It's only one more experience. You get more or less the same boost and it doesn't and exile. You don't have to exile the card so you're probably saving the experience anyway throughout the course of a campaign yeah um like i'm not super defending this card it was like number four from the bottom for me like mm-hmm. it's <laughs> sure it was just not quite on my list yeah sure 
Yeah, I just it, it definitely could come in handy, but I think the other options just outclass it, and I don't want to have to spend an action to put this down, and then an action to use the exile. And... So, going on to neutral. So let's read our top two, because we all know charisma is at level zero. Like, it's just <laughs> that high up there. Um, sure is. Yeah, Sean, go ahead. Uh, so, as we talked about, it's not terribly sexy in effect, but I found it to be ter- terribly effective, is Emergency Quiche Level 2. Mm-hmm. And then one of my very, very new fav- er, favorite, no, no, sorry, new, very, very favorite, there we go, cards, is the Red Gloved Man. And Charisma, yeah. Um... Oh, yes, and Charisma. I thought that was a foregone yeah, yeah. conclusion. Ian? Uh, why don't you do yours first? Because I forgot to do neutral. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I've already got one for you, Ian. Put charisma on there. Because um, I also have charisma. Red glove man. I actually picked moment of respite over mm. quiche level two. Barely. Okay. Barely. Yeah, I think I would go uh, definitely charisma, moment of respite, and oh god, what's the other one? Red glove man. Okay. So, Charisma, what do we need to say about it? Allies are the most powerful cards in the game, for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> Ally is good. Play Charisma. Having more is better. Yeah. And the Dunwich Cycle gives you, like, five billion allies, so why not? Yeah. And that. And that. Uh, Red Glove Man. Kind of just... Amazeballs. Like, he... Oh my god, there's so much you can do with this guy that, like, even even when you just read him on a surface level and don't fully process it, or at least when I mm-hmm. read him on the surface level and didn't fully process it, he's good. Yeah. And then when you start playing him and you realize, like, oh, that four health and four sanity opens up a realm of attacks of opportunity that I could take to do other things. Yeah. And that's, like, that's nowhere printed on his card that's apparent, but as soon as you get him on the board and be like, I could investigate three times with this enemy engaged with me right now and clear the scenario. Yeah. All right, let's do that. He uh, he is the Gandalf of this game, I think. Mm-hmm. He absolutely Arkham is. Arkham Gandalf. Yeah. <laughs> and he's... Gandalf the Red. He's Gandalf the Red. Uh, and he's kind of like... He's like that gangster in the back alley who's like, Hey, what do you want to get done this turn? I'm like, for a price? <laughs> yeah, we can do that. You know, like he just... Who do you need dead? <laughs> and, yeah. What location do you need cleared? Yeah. He just does it, and then leaves, so he doesn't get caught. Mm-hmm. And the fact that he sticks around to the end of the next Mythos phase is yeah. just what seals it for me. Because if he went away at the end of the round, like, yeah, good. Can do a lot of stuff on your turn. Mm-hmm. But the fact that he sticks around to the end of the Mythos phase means you can... Like, like skids could play this and be like, oh... I don't care about willpower tests this mythos phase. Thanks for trying, though, encounter deck. <laughs> yeah. Or, oh, no, I failed a willpower test. Now I have to take three dead... Oh, that doesn't matter. Oh, three, three <laughs> horror... Oh, yeah, I, I don't care. Like, he does so much for a single turn. I think the one trick is, is, again, this is why I was talking about him in my Dark Horse build, is saving up the two resources to, to play him took a little bit more thought mm-hmm. in my Dark Horse build. But playing him in a normal build where you actually just keep resources around, like, two cost at the beginning of the turn, and fast, like, you can do this in reaction to an enemy engaging you, and it doesn't invoke an attack of opportunity. Yeah. There's just, oh, God, this card is so good. Worth every XP. So, my next Agnes build is going to drop the Dark Horse, run two Red Gloved Men, or Mans, I suppose you would (laughs) characterize that slightly differently. (laughs) <laughs> and uh yeah chance encounter to just recur it with flair to go find him <laughs> with with flair ah yeah. ah oh, oh, so good so moment of respite versus quiche mm-hmm. um they both draw a card one heals you one gives you money um yeah except one you have to pay yeah for. but it also heals three horror which that is true. Like if you're playing Agnes, that's a like I mean, getting on in those later scenarios, like if you didn't get peed out early or you're repeatedly taking horror, that's a decent amount of like damage that is healed and also ready to give back out. Um, I think some of the and remind me how much XP? Uh, three. It is three. I think. Okay. But 
So, I hope this is a fair question. Why not level 2 Fearless? Um, See, what yeah. stops me up about Moment of Respite is the 3 cost. Because I feel like yeah. most of the investigators that want it are the poor ones. Yeah. Okay, you know what? I changed, I changed my list. I'm going quiche. Oh. <laughs> Ian, I'm you're sticking, on your own. I'm sticking with respite. <laughs> It, Way to go, Ian. All right, defend it. it. It's like the most efficient other than the XP means of hor- healing horror quickly. So, yeah, but you the, have to count that XP. Ian. The thing it is, the something. thing is, it's neutral. So, like, it's not against fearless. It's against whatever that particular class has. The only like this is really in a lot of ways a guardian card. But the only thing that has hurt this a bit is that. We have gotten a lot of good soaks for Guardian, which I have ended up playing instead of this. But I like that this is just an option that's out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The fact that it's neutral is a big thing. Yes, yes. And I feel like this might be a mid to late campaign buy for, for most investigators, like especially if you're starting to accrue mental trauma, like if, if Izzy has gotten away from you a couple times or mm-hmm. you've failed to cover some things up. Yeah, yeah. I, I picked this up with Skits because he was had like two mental trauma at one point. It didn't save him, but <laughs> <laughs> like I, I feel like I'll take this over Elder Sign Amulet in most cases. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Quiche level two. I mean, Quiche is already a card that pretty much goes in every deck. And then you add another click to it, guys. Yeah, that's, yeah. It's you click efficiency. Click. It's goes... Or sorry, uh, we'll do magic terms. It's a cantrip now. Oh, no, no, no. Don't you put magic terms in my mouth. I find this one is kind of like... It's it's not one I'm like super excited about. And it's not exactly. something I go early on. It's like I'm getting midway or near the end of the campaign. And I just have a couple XP left over. I'm like, eh, I'll upgrade my quiches, I guess. Like Exactly. Yep. It's not sexy. But then once it's in your deck, you're like, all right, cool. Yep. Well, I'm moving through things. And you know what? It's just, it's a little bit more action compression, right? Yeah. And action compression is good. It is. Bottom three. So I've got Relic Hunter with an asterisk. That's right now. Mm-hmm. I'm sure at some point in the game we'll have tons of accessories to throw in and this will be good. But right now, it's probably, I want to say it's, I suppose, the second least contentious slot after the body. Yeah. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Depending on investigator, but yeah. Yeah. So Relic Hunter, Kukri, and I actually had Moment of Respite in my bottom three simply because of that cost. You dirty whore. I know. I play Agnes, too, like you'd think. I don't know. I just That three cost ends up being more of a barrier than I initially thought it would be. Uh, Ian? Uh, I, I also didn't come up with this one, so I'll do it on the fly. <laughs> I also would say Kukri. Uh, because kukri um i would also say relic hunter because there's definitely use for it but i haven't it's basically one for the future more so i don't know the third one would be hard it's definitely not respite <laughs> i'm tempted to say quiche just to troll you guys um <laughs> but... <laughs> god damn it yeah. i guess maybe i would say smoking pipe even though i like it but it's probably there's probably not a lot of investigators that are trading. I always have to get this right in my head. Smoking pipe is trading damage to heal horror. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's correct. Uh, Painkillers is taking horror to heal damage. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Correct. So smoking pipe. I just think there's not as much pressure in Dunwich on damage as there is on horror. So. Like trading out damage for horror is usually not a good deal. Fair enough. Um, for mine, Kukri, Relic Hunter, again with the asterisks, right? Like four years from now, when you teamwork away a contrabanded relic of some sort. Um, yeah. And then my third one was Fine Clothes. Um, oh, I yeah. think it's That's just a good it's one. such a niche card. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not a good card. It's just like, I don't know. I like this as a one of in in like a level zero deck because at least in Dunwich and then in, in Night of the Zealot, mm-hmm. uh, the early quests seem to be the one where the parlays are happening. Yeah. And it's also a one one um, soak. Like, 
Yeah, exactly. It's a one cost, one one soak for the slot that we have the least things to put in. Yeah, for cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just it's not. It's, it's I. Right. You know, yeah, it, it is what it is. Um, so relic hunter. I think we've talked about. It just yeah, it, it's not a competitive slot right now, and there's nothing like, like there's if you put two allies down, you're like holy moly, I got these awesome powers two relic or two artifacts no what's the slot called accessory, accessory. i always yeah. i always say necklace but i know that's not it <laughs> um but there's no two like accessories that really boost you so much that it'd be great the only one i can think of and again cost is an issue here is if agnes finds her signature and then also wants rabbit's foot or something i don't know the rosary or something yeah I think I think Agnes could, would be the only one that would take it because she has the option of uh, rosary, maybe, her maybe thing, Wendy, uh, and the jewel, the jewel, and rabbit's foot, and rabbit's foot. Oh yeah, and then Wendy too because yeah. she's got her amulet, and then she also kind of likes rabbit's foot. But I don't think that's too crazy. Like if you find her amulet early, yeah, you probably hold on to it for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, it's usually not a, enough issue to include a whole card to do it. Kukri, I mean. It's fine. It's, okay. it's like it's a better. It's better than knife. Slightly, but yeah. <laughs> it, it turns out like what the 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 neutral selection for the Dunwich Legacy is only like like nine cards. Yeah. So, yeah. If you're in the bottom three, like you're not that far from. The top <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just it feels like almost every other. Well, no, every other weapon is better, save maybe Switchblade level zero or Blackjack. Um, yeah, but it just... I feel like I feel like this one's better in investigators that can somehow get extra actions because then that cost is less to them. So if you, I think this is best in rogue at the moment, but rogue it's has... a neutral weapon. I'm not expecting yep. much. Sean, we kind of talked about moment of respite when we were talking about on our plus side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it, it's really I love the I love the effect. I love the card draw. It's the three experience for three costs that that just makes me go oh god like finding. And maybe maybe it is, I will admit, that it might just be my recent rash of Dark Horse builds that is coloring me mm-hmm. to, to a hint away from the three-cost card, but that, that's what gets it for me. And again, it's, it's not like a terrible card. I'll still play it in certain Investigators. It's just not at the top for me. Yeah, fine clothes. Meh. It's average. Uh, it's all right. Ian, it's all right. What was your extra? Uh, now I can't even remember. Oh, Smoking Pipe was what I said. Oh, right. I agree with you. I mean, usually damage is the one being pushed more so. Yeah. Cause I mean, I'll just say with damage. with a caveat that I'm a fan of actually both those cards, that and Painkillers, because yes. they're, yeah. ne- they're <laughs> neutral and it's just like flexible ways to manipulate your stats. So it's always yeah. going to be good in that way. Mm-hmm. So that is the, the Orn Library card catalog for the Dunwich Legacy. Yep. That was fun. I like that. We should do that. I, I think we should definitely do this every cycle, and maybe. I don't know. No. I I don't know. I feel like there was a decent amount of cards in this cycle. Like I didn't feel. I think the two of. Um, rule for Arkham helps it compared to something like Lord of the Rings. It gets like Absolutely. the same amount of player cards, but because they are three ofs in a deck, you don't get as many. Yeah, and with the deck size, I mean, you're still getting the same ratio kind of of cards, right? Like if you put in three of versus two of so Mm -hmm. yeah i like the two of idea because it just gives you more cards in a pack that has to share the space with an encounter with encounter cards so oh all right well i just looked at our timestamp. we are cresting three hours at this point Mm -hmm. so let's move this into the highest and the tightest tentacle time we've ever done cool scott what's grabbing you uh they just announced a new hearthstone expansion looks super awesome uh, they're getting new hero powers with these special hero cards and stuff, so you can actually change your hero into a Death Knight. Um, so your hero dies and you get a new hero. It's pretty sweet. Uh, and next month, I am going to try and push for the Legend Ranked, which is insane, and it just Ew. takes a lot of games. Uh, I listen to a podcast. You should, like, Twitch that or something. <sighs> no. Um, <laughs> I uh, listen to a podcast called The Angry Chicken, and the guy who hits legends somewhat often there says like and i've heard this everywhere it's just the amount of games you play like if you're a decent player you can hit legend um 
and it averages like you need to play between 250 and 400 games in a month um so you just basically Oof. play 15 games a day every single day <laughs> till you hit legend so goodness yeah it's gonna hurt anyways that's what's catching me awesome ian Mine's high and tight because uh, my technical time consists of I'm moving, so my free time has gone to packing and getting ready for that. So, oh, no. yeah, so I'll be moving at beginning of next month. That's about it. Um, if you happen to be in the Monterey, California area or Santa Cruz or Salinas and you happen to be listening to this podcast, go ahead and contact me and we can try to get a group together. That's about it. Nice. So about how far away are you moving from where you're at now? It's about two or three hours driving. Well, oh, that's, with no that's with no traffic, two hours, I guess. It's it's basically a beach town, so I'm gonna be by the ocean. No, oh, nice, Ooh. nice. So you're gonna you're gonna kick your commute though, right? Uh, yeah, I'm pr- currently working from home and still gonna be doing that. So that uh, pretty much no change in that regard. But I just have better scenery. <laughs> awesome. Well, and that that matters. Yep. Change of scenery is nice. Uh, Nick had a toss in here that he's actually been working on some custom cards for each of the Mythos Busters hosts, which has been a, a pleasure to see him post his, his works in progress in our, in our chat. Um, so, uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty cool. I think he's, he's planning on printing them out for Gen Con. I, I'm excited to see that happen. My only gripe is uh, he the picture he picked for me is weird because it's me doing a deadlift, which is not a thing I do on a regular basis. <laughs> I'm not a gym rat. I run most of the time as, as a physical activity. <laughs> the last time that I lifted weights was this picture, and that was at Gen Con last year. So uh, I don't know, just an odd moment there where I'm like, oh, hey, uh, like this picture is probably going to encapsulate me as a person, right? Lifting weights. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, my picture, I like far more dressed up than I ever do, so. (laughs) (laughs) Dude, he needs to get a hold of your driver's license picture where you look like grizzly fucking ass. That's amazing. That would be more accurate to the daily. (laughs) Well, you can't even tell who I am in my picture, so. That's true. Look at that. You can't even, you can't even. Anyway, uh, so I I particularly liked these. I think the the signature weaknesses and and, uh, signature positive cards, because they're spread across different card types those are the most fun for me like ian i don't know if you know this but i suggested your weakness where you have this odd affinity for like gross evil enemy characters yeah. like you love grima it's so on point and for some reason you continue to champion brown jenkin even he's the even though he's like the most disgusting thing that's ever been created in fiction yep yep i'm still waiting for that day we get a brown jenkin investigator yeah <laughs> All right, so anyway, uh, so then for my part, I actually have been just, oh, God, so much craziness lately. We've, I can't even remember if I talked about this on the last podcast. I feel like the past two months has been nothing but me complaining about how much bad luck I've been having in the real world. You are Rex? Uh, I pretty much, I feel like Rex right now. We, we've we busted two car, or sorry, three cars, which which is impressive because wow. we only own two. <laughs> Um, then after I got the, the third repair done on the one car that was then working, the other car is still having issues. Uh, we got rear ended in, in that car that was still working, oh God. um, which then caused the car not to work. It was undrivable at that point and old enough that the, the insurance company totaled it. Um, we had our hot water heater go out a month and a half ago and I'm sure I'm missing. Oh yeah. And then I burned myself. That that one was fun. Scott got to see those pictures. Yeah, that was a, that was a substantial burn. It I should have gone in for medical attention sooner than I did. Is is what I learned. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, texting me a <laughs> picture anyway. is not medical attention. <laughs> oh no, 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 it certainly was not. It was more just like if you freaked out at me, then it, it, you were my you were my like my barometer in that case. Like if you if you had freaked out at me and been like you need to get to the hospital, I would have listened. Mm-hmm. But you didn't. You're just like ah. Uh, probably gonna leave a scar yeah pretty much so anyway my whole point bringing that up is i haven't had in like the last month and a half two months a whole lot of time to game and it's been stressing me out the only gaming i've done really is i've been playing a bit of the bioshock uh remaster on po ps4 and i've been playing the horse memories campaign um but the other things i've been getting up to the the things i want to prop on tentacle time is uh 
Cardboard of the Rings, uh, my other podcast, is currently wrapping up, or at least the first stage and my involvement in it is currently wrapping up. And the last episode we did, I thought went particularly well. We do really stupid like role play <laughs> games on on that podcast that for some reason just kind of work. And we did uh, it was called the Law Offices of Sean and Brian, which is a complete misnomer to what it actually is. But basically, if you're into Lord of the Rings lore and know anything about that game, that was a really fun episode to do. So maybe check that out. And in addition to that, because I apparently just love the sound of my own voice, I was also a guest host on the White Book podcast, which is a podcast, possibly the podcast, depending on who you're talking to, about <laughs> the Game of Thrones LCG where we played a game called The Murdered, which we're definitely bringing over to this uh, to this podcast. I think I mentioned this on the last episode because yeah. we just did The Murdered on COTR. Mm-hmm. Um, but so if you're into the, the Song of Ice and Fire, I might go check that out because my, uh, my buddy Brian and I went over to that podcast and <laughs> brought our The Murder with The Mastery to it. It's a fun game, so we will definitely be playing that at some point here, probably when the par- the card pool is just a little bit bigger. Mm-hmm. There's already quite a few the murders, but yes, there there sure yeah. are. There sure are. Uh, the only other thing I would say is I've been just prepping for Gen Con. Like it's it's so close to real. Like I said, Ian got us our swag squared away. Like I'm receiving it next week, and we'll be posting uh, nondescript, non spoilers teaser pictures i might be holding objects over my nipples in in titillation (laughs) excellent um and gen con oh my god we're less than a month away like that that blows my mind yeah but i'm excited for that so i think that wraps it up for this episode uh guys i'm gonna run through the list here it's getting long we're probably gonna pare this down at some point yeah as we mentioned last (laughs) episode yeah it needs a pairing it needs a pairing we're just going to assume that some people have seen these things if they're listening to the podcast. Um, so, as we mentioned last episode, we'd love to see some more metrics and feedback on the podcast. If you have a minute, please go give us a review on iTunes or whatever review platform you can find us to review on. If you name a host and an impression, give us five stars. Uh, we will That host will read your review with that terrible terrible impression or voice that you list on the show if you have questions or comments please call the mythos busters hotline at 203-493-MYTH or if you prefer the numerical it's 203-493-6984 check out the miskatonic av club it's our separate card review podcast find us at gmail at mythosbusterspod at gmail.com find us on twitter facebook discord we have our own website check out the blog we've got a youtube channel just google mythos busters you'll find everything guys any parting shots before we close this up i think three hours is quite enough (laughs) (laughs) it it sure seems like it you know and the problem is we skipped a week like we're off schedule now so we had we had extra stuff it's true We, we build up an hour per week and we just didn't get to do two hours last week so now we're at three I think we need to figure out how to install a release valve on this machine. Yeah. yeah. It also didn't help that FFG dropped the mother of spoilers on us. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, that had to go through. And also, Scott, I don't know how your ass is doing nowadays, but uh, if if that's going to be up and operational, <laughs> definitely check our Discord. And uh, our Facebook would probably be another place to go check if, if Scott's going to go live and do some soloing. Yes, that, I'm that's, sure he'd be happy to put his ass on. Facebook. That's the plan coming up. <laughs> that's the plan coming up this week, uh, or like this next coming week, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I have off as long as my kid doesn't get sick and my house doesn't flood or something like that. I'll be streaming. So awesome! Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Well, that wraps it up for episode twenty of Mythos Busters. We will see you next time.